Yeah, Ben's destroyed. He's got no recovery here. Uh, he's he, he granted the position. California has two senators and Colorado has two senators to point. He granted the position that you can have DEI that's not essentially about race after spending 19 minutes insisting that DEI was about race. Um, ben abandoned his stance, um, and that is that should be the entire takeaway. You could pair this all down to the one bit, and uh, you, you could have maybe two bits. You have the bit where Ben gives his initial stance on what DEI is, and you have here where he is forced to abandon that position and accept the other mm. position. Oh. Yes. We're going to do a bit of a React stream. Now, I have pre-watched the first, like, 15 minutes of this. So I started on the first 15 minutes, and I thought to myself, you know what? I should do this on stream. Because I can, um, I can get some good commentary in here. Notes. We might take some notes while we're at it. So the reason I wanted to do a react to this is a couple reasons. Uh, this is a Jubilee segment, which is Ben Shapiro versus 25 Kamala Harris voters. Um, Kamala, Kamala, Kamala. I'm not sure which is correct. Um, I see people do corrections for that a lot. Uh, I've never kept track. Harris voters up against 25 Harris voters. I myself am a Harris voter. Hmm. The reason I find this palatable and why I want to watch this one is because among figures on the right, I think Ben Shapiro actually means what he says and cares about what the truth is. And that puts him in kind of an upper echelon of right-wing commentators, because I think a lot of right-wing commentators don't care what the facts are, don't care what the truth is, they don't care about whether or not they're right, they just kind of want to shout people down and win. And I think Ben Shapiro uses some rhetorical techniques that are very gish gallopy. He talks very fast, he can throw out a lot of points, uh, and I don't like that method. But I think at the end of the day, uh, it, uh, the rules do matter to him. So I think that he has some principles, and he does see himself as a moral actor. And if I compare that to some other people, I think Matt Walsh, who is also on the same network, The Daily Wire, I think Matt Walsh doesn't care about the facts. I think Dennis Prager doesn't care about being a moral actor or a moral person. Um, Dennis Prager thinks misogyny is a virtue. I think Tim Pool doesn't care about what he's saying in the moment or what kind of arguments he's making. Uh, he's just in it for money, uh, which is why he got paid by Russia to tout Russian talking points. So got my popcorn over here, and we're going to dig into this. Now, oh, before I get too much further in, the format. So this is Jubilee's 25v1. So you've got all these people around Ben in a circle, and they're going to take turns debating. Whenever somebody is debating, if half the people in the room or more raise their red flags, they're going to swap out the debater. It's like a no confidence thing. Now, they swap the debater basically using musical chairs. It's content. <laughs> so. That's the format. So I've only seen the first 15 minutes or so of this, but we're going to get into it. I think there is a bit of a problem with the format in that it leads people to try and rush through their arguments. And I'm going to get a little bit in before I talk about the problems with that and what I think is the proper argumentative method to get into this. So let's, let's hit play. I need to make sure about 50% or more of this total React video is me yakking and not this, for it to be a legitimate React video. So I think anybody who is more about the content than they are about what they're saying sucks. I would normally play this sped up, but if I speed up Ben Shapiro, he will be completely uninterpretable. No, it is. They are not lost. They're released to their sponsors who have to go through background checks. This is just the intro bit. We'll cut through it. To put DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion at the center of her policies is destructive. 
So Ben is opening with the claim that DEI bad. And um, because Kamala puts DEI forward, Kamala is therefore bad. So the first thing to get into about this when somebody raises this, and the first thing I find among other people I've talked to in a couple different spaces, is you got to figure out what they mean by DEI. So the thing that people mean by DEI can be different, can be within a different range. It's usually uncharitable. How's it going, dude? Gosh. Where do I get one of those hats? Oh, my boy made it for me. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, you know, uh, first of all, we're standing on stolen indigenous Tongva land, right? This is Are you moving anytime soon? Land? No. So that's a really weird point to leap to. So he's leaping past a lot of possible questions into the idea that DEI is good, actually, or that equity is good, actually, um, or rather that we need to do a specific kind of DEI. Um, so jumping straight to this land was taken from the Indians is trying to make a point about like inequity, but you could make this point a lot better. You could make this point in a way that Ben is more likely to agree with. This is just a really obtuse angle to come at this from. Oh, but Why? the fact of the matter is, is I'm born and raised California. We're talking yeah, about dirt, land. diversity, so equity, bad. invasion. We should. So why don't we you? absolutely you should. You could do it today, right now. Equity Great. invasion? We should, what that but means. that's not my point here. The point is, you're saying that diversity, equity, So Ben's just yakking there because yeah. he doesn't know where right. this is going. So when we look at this country that is built off the backs of slavery and white supremacy taking the lead, building the roots and foundations of everything that you know and believe today... He's correct. It's ironic to see a He's black correct. and Indian this is not woman who's rising a great up angle for argument against, against ben, society, pushing them down. And this isn't just the fact that they're black and Indian and a woman. It's the fact that can you give me an example of how society pushed Kamala Harris down, please? The demographic of this is an easy is end for Ben well, yeah, because this isn't getting to the point. Kamala Harris is being pushed down by society. I'm not suggesting this is a very long walk. I mean, that's so okay, my boss, point is saying I'm that. Sorry. And so he's replaced. Please return to your seat. Good to meet you. So you start the conversation. The first thing you want to establish within this conversation is what does Ben mean by DEI? You can make an assumption about what Ben means by DEI. We've all probably heard somebody make a dumb DEI argument, but you need to lay foundations. And this is um, something that I find is problematic in a lot of conversations and needs to be improved. And I might make another video about it later, but this is something I want to note. So in a lot of these conversations, when you're coming up, especially if you need to score points really quick, the goal that a lot of people come into a conversation with is score points, use gotcha arguments. And that's like what their, their, their entire goal is to create a soundbite and score points by getting somebody in a gotcha argument. And their method for doing this is they're going to make assumptions about what the argument will be and try to outflank it because they don't want to take the long walk to get somewhere. They want to jump straight to their point because their point is something that they find exciting. To the end, this is also called mind reading. It's very bad to do in a discussion because you're not going to get where you want to go. If you mind read incorrectly, you're going to have just this huge miss. You'll talk past each other for this huge amount of time. Um, and I've had a lot of people who are kind of, who kind of don't know what they're talking about, try to mind read in a discussion. And they spend the entire time arguing against a straw man that they imagine my argument to be. Or I'll say one thing and they'll imagine something that's associated with that. Or I'll say something that I've misused, perhaps, or that I have a different understanding of, and we're completely lost. So these are bad goals. Correct goal is to communicate. And this is not with reference to Ben Shapiro, because I think Ben Shapiro, you might actually be able to mind read Ben Shapiro a little. You might Ben Shapiro's stances are very public, and you can maybe hold him to that. And if this is somebody who has a prior stance that you're aware of, you can hold them to that stance. And then it might be more appropriate to score points or use gotchas. If you talk to Donald Trump, use gotchas. Do it. No holds barred. But 
when you're talking to somebody in a general space, there's an audience. Your priority is not to communicate with the person you are communicating with. Your priority is to communicate to everybody you could possibly be talking to at the same time um, so that somebody could review your conversation and understand it and recognize that you have communicated in the superior fashion. And that somebody might just be you. You are your own audience. You might be the only person who's privy to your conversation with this other guy, but your communication should be effective with regards to yourself, such that if you were reading this, you would be convinced and find it to be well-written. Hmm. That is your proper goal. <clears throat> if that is your goal, you are, are going to create a better structure. And the method for this, you're going to clarify, clarify, clarify. Um, you want to not talk past the other guy. Word wrap is not being kind to me on spacing that. Whatever. You want to make sure that the other person knows exactly what you mean and you know exactly what the other person means. If you know exactly what the other person means and they know exactly what you mean, the discussion can complete. Uh, otherwise, it's the discussion could go on forever, could be utterly unproductive, nothing could happen because you won't get there. So the first step is to clarify what Ben means by DEI and then possibly to clarify what DEI actually is. Let's go to the next person. A little popcorn. Whoa, whoa. Ben. Hey, Ben. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. I neglected this so popcorn my, uh, half of its part. You would be, why is that a destructive thing? Why is that a bad thing? When why is DEI destructive? Country, Clarify uh, what you mean I, by I DEI. That, why do you uh, believe DEI is a destructive thing? advantage over uh, some uh, communities that have been discriminated against. So why would you say that that is a destructive thing and not, you know, making maybe making up for lost time? Sure. So let me let me explain what I mean by diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. So the basic theory of diversity, equity, and inclusion is spelled out by people like Richard Delgado, who's sort of one of the founders of, for example, critical race theory. This is Ben's position on what DEI is. You do not need to accept his position on what this is to progress the argument. Is that essentially disparities equal discrimination? That if you see any disparity between one group in the United States and another group in the United States, that is the result of some exterior discrimination. It is not the result of individuals within that group acting differently. It's mm -hmm. not the result of cultural differences. It's not the result of aggregated differences within individuals within that. Group. That guy with the with the like, Ugh. yeah, uh, that's very correct. So what Ben is saying here is a kind of essentialization where he's saying that the differences between groups are necessarily the result of this other thing that he's bringing up, which is its behavior. If a group has a difference, it's because that group behaves differently. And Ben is saying that Ben is framing this around this being an argument made by somebody else that constitutes critical race theory, which I believe he cited um, Richard Delgado. I'm not familiar with the individual. Anywho, he's saying that this person makes this argument, and he's saying that that is not necessarily the case, therefore blah, blah, blah. It could be these other things. But Ben's argument, or Ben's position, is that it actually is these other things, uh, rather than saying that um, it's not the case and there are other possibilities. He's saying that this other case is the case, and it is these differences. Um, one way of wedging open this argument, then, is by saying, is it not possible that it is the case that there is this, do we not look and find examples of discrimination out in the world? I need to get something out of my oven. Be right back. You can put a wedge into this by saying, but Ben, we have actual evidence of discrimination in a lot of places in the country. So we're not guessing that there is discrimination because there is disparity. Group. We're noting and that and we have discrimination and we're, we're finding it also is destructive in that we're, we're noting we have disparity and we're finding the discrimination the on the basis of that race, makes it happen. not the best way of actually bringing Americans together or forming policy that is the best for all Americans. Do, do you think there's room for nuance, perhaps, though? Like, yeah, maybe not everybody, but there ha certainly has been a large sect of people that has had it harder because of which the, the guy is the color of their skin or their somewhat getting to, but he's framing it from the position of people having a harder time, not framing it from the position of some people who we have found the racism. I will say that history has you can just say there's racism and that if you are talking about historic marginalization of particular groups, that has consequences. The problem is that when you design policy in order to rectify for cosmic injustices or historic 
historic injustice is. Okay, he said, and he said, or historic. I was about to to jump in on that. Just like, okay, it's we're not talking about cosmic injustices of the happenstance of people's birth here. We're talking about there are racists who have done racist things. How do you? We're talking about correcting redlining. How this is not you have fantasy. To try and measure out whether underperformance, say, economically, is due to those historic injustices. If so, how much? What is the corrective policy that is actually aimed at achieving best opportunity for all? The diversity okay, so can we do that? Policies that are directed at separating race from race and then benefiting one race, for example, at the expense of another, ignore the fact that there are individuals within those groups, that history does not fall Not a zero-sum game. That, frankly, genetics and intelligence don't necessarily fall on, as an individual level, mm -hmm. right? You and I, we don't look the same. We might have different heights. We might have different qualities. You know, that, that is just the way that... that you know, God or nature has bestowed skill sets on, on everybody. Mm -hmm. What exactly is the government supposed to correct for? And if you took this entire group and you separated it in half, just draw a line anywhere. This is Ben anywhere you draw carrying line, on and yakking unnecessarily because this is a very good, solid argumentative line against Ben. But, but does that mean this guy should have jumped in earlier. Uh, an effect in that story at all? I, I'm not going to. No, you'd be a fool to claim that, mm -hmm. that, that, again, past injustices have no effect on what's happened today. Yeah, and Ben has to grant something there. Thanks so much. Okay, and we rotate the guy out. So when Ben stopped yakking and the guy finally got back in, he makes a point, Ben has to grant it because we all know that there is actually racism. And so he may have been able to more effectively communicate the point. He should have interrupted Ben. Um, he's being a, a little unnecessarily polite when Ben is going into this really long thing. Nobody is saying we can't means test. Um, so if you say that we want to get everybody up to a certain baseline, um, nobody is suggesting that um, a black college graduate has to be given a certain level of assistance because they're black. We could target the assistance at black people who are below the poverty line only, and that'd be fine. Nobody's saying that's nobody's saying that this these policies have to be a certain way, the way that Ben is painting them as. Ben doesn't want to look at the policies. He's objecting to the very idea of these policies existing, because there's not a specific policy he's calling out. That was so nice, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you believe that certain economic disparities between racial groups are caused as a result of economic, um, no, cultural differences? Sure. So and she's getting at the so fact that Ben was what essentializing. on this? What would you say contributes to your belief in that. Okay, so now this is a pretty good angle to go at, I think, in general, in terms of better understanding Ben. It's like, Ben, why are you essentializing people? What is your grounding for doing this? Why do you have this other thing? So this doesn't necessarily bring us towards the the win in the argument. I'm trying to do air quotes, but I have a popcorn in my hand. The win. But it might help us understand Ben. This is good conversationally, not Culture so much in terms of a debate, value. but I, li I, I like it. I think that's a cool way to approach the topic. You can check this by the amount of hours that the kids of particular cultures study. So, for example, Korean Americans study a lot more than, for example, Latino Americans in terms of the, the number of hours that kids, that kids study. It would, be, it would be hard to suggest what to attribute that to other than sort of parental guidance and, and what exactly the priorities are of the parents. Uh, this is true, by the way, between white people. Okay, so when I talk about disparities between groups, you can talk about white Appalachia and there are very different values with regard to studying than there are for, say, upper class white Americans who are living in Brooklyn, right? That, that's, that's not the exact same yeah, the thing. Yeah, the problem with so this is that it lets Ben, yeah. are not just racial differences. I think that that- Is there a hot key for changing the playback speed? map that on and pretend that that's all the same, that's obviously not true. But cultural differences do explain an enormous amount of group disparities across I incomes. I speed. Uh, to take a, take a perfect example, you know, if you look at, at single motherhood rates, they're not equivalent across groups. So there's gonna have He's massive differences with regard to outcomes for children. So if you're talking about cultural differences, again, cultural is just a way, for, it was a rough way of saying how people act within a group on a large scale. And that is going to amount to some generalization, but that generalization is going to tend to, shall we say, concur. It's, it's going to correlate very highly without. Ben does not value brevity. Um, is acclimated over time. It becomes a thing over time. And so do you not think that these historical um, disadvantages that certain ethnic groups have been through over time has created this culture where in which they're unable. This is a very intelligent ahead. response. You do say that Asian Americans. Are how do you how do you divorce the historic study, discrimination yes, from the development of culture? If your argument that is that culture is Asian developed in a way that disadvantages certain groups and we shouldn't be addressing culture, how do you divorce um, that? I can't quite read this fact check through the subtitles. Can I move the subtitles?
Uh, Congress repealed the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1943. Okay, yeah, she's referring to um, discrimination against China that was going on for a time. And in what, order what for the them, they were given visas, which allowed them to come into the... Yes, they were given easier I, I, I processes into visas, the, the, the yes, visas which allowed them into... Yes. No, it's a they form are, of reparations, which they were once excluded from coming in reparations is a trigger word for ben he's triggered opportunity to attain these visas allowed them into the u.s and mainly the individuals who were able to attain those were people with higher educations which is why it may seem that um asian americans within the country who come in typically with higher income she's making really good points i think um she's a little shaky on her delivery she's nervous more studious than latino americans but what we have to take into account is that um, Possibly Latin also America, angry. Um, and Hispanic people have faced a lot, a lot of they're, they're, tremendous setback due to historical so atrocities. It's the, not it, their culture per se. What you see within, is there, is yeah, there I think she's rightfully angry in here, or is it all historic circumstance? Everything is based off of history. Everything acclimates. Everything it's a mix, is, Ben. Everything's a mix of everything. So, we are allowed to look at various way, factors individually. Okay, that's my name. I liked her points. Kids locking in. Whoa. <laughs> Did there. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> How are you? Good to meet you. So your basis is saying that culturally, people don't have the same advantages, right? Uh, I'm saying that, that not every culture sort of in, initiates the same action within groups. What Ben is saying is that some cultures have a bad work ethic. It's a, it's a racist argument. So, in part, you're saying that you're part of each culture. You know what goes on in each culture to say these things. No, I'm saying that I can analyze the activities of a particular group with reference to their actual behavior. So, if you go okay. to my... So, Ben is getting at the idea that he's able to know what a culture is like by analyzing them. And I think there, this is a point where we, we could step back and look at the strategy of the discussion. So, Ben has entered in with the point that DEI bad. That's his thing. So diversity, equity, and inclusion. And the problem we have here, part of the problem, we are effectively granting Ben the framework of Ben's understanding of diversity, equity, and inclusion. The way to get this argument to its proper conclusion is to, there are two ways of doing it. One is we can establish that there is a different interpretation of what diversity, equity, and inclusion properly means. Because ben, Ben's argument relies on mapping a specific understanding of DEI to the Harris campaign. Because he's saying that Harris is making this argument by making DEI a pillar of what she does. But the DEI that Harris is referring to is not necessarily the same DEI that Ben is referring to. So I think we need to go back to the words of diversity, equity, and inclusion, get into what that is. So the first thing to do here is probably say, like, there's racism, right? Like, we know there's racism. Should we do something about it? Should we do anything about it? Should we try to stop people from being racist? If somebody is saying that they won't rent to black people, or if they're saying they won't sell milkshakes to the Jews, maybe we should do something about that. Those would be equity policies. When you pre Any kind of discrimination prevention is an equity or an inclusion policy. The second question you get into, or the second line of attack you get to, you have to appeal to Ben on a motion, because it's just not going to sink in. He's going to go back to something rote. So you have to hit him on a point where his rote argumentation is not on the same level. Because if you ask him, Ben, do you think you can understand what it's like to live as a black person by just observation without talking to black people, he's going to say, yeah, you probably can. So don't use black people. Say like, Ben, can we understand the life experiences and the discrimination against the Jewish people without involving Jewish people? Because he's going to be a lot more tempted to say, no, you have to talk to Jewish people. And that's diversity. Like, okay, Ben, we need to involve Jewish people in our understanding of how to prevent anti-Semitism, right? That's diversity. That's the diversity we need to ensure that we're not racist. And then with that, you're at a state to get Ben to grant diversity, equity, and inclusion because you just reduce the bar on what those things are. And you, you can pretty easily communicate that this is the way Kamala Harris understands 
um, these various things. And that's that's Coach, the win. We're told that we can achieve anything through hard work. We have to work 10 times harder, but you're not part of our culture. So you are explaining something that doesn't have to do with you. But in turn, you're saying that that culture, unfortunately, does not value the same thing that the next culture does. So revealed preference tends to be a better way of doing social science than subjective perception. So revealed, per so revealed preference argument is how people is that, in the world. So for example, if you have um, Ben, you don't know what it's like to be black. You can't tell us what it's like to be black, and you can't tell us what our culture is. Okay. Everybody has everybody so has then, a, uh, you which is emotionally a reasonable say, argument to make. You know, Mary, but to make this argument effectively to Ben Shapiro, you have to frame it around Jewishness. So they'll listen. hard. What is that called then? Okay, so the the idea that, that people generally value nepotism over studying so then they get into the evidence of that, given the fact nepotism the in the in the corporate world, country is not created which Ben's not going to pick up on, or through inherited wealth. But Donald Trump was given nepotism, was he not? I mean, he that's correct. Yeah, one example among a, a bajillion. Donald Trump also very, very exercises wealthy. a shitload of nepotism. Now. I certainly wasn't born very wealthy. And Ben's but never criticized him for it. Speak on Donald Trump, I, I, but I mean, experience nepotism is not. Okay. Directly I mean, related to what we're talking about. History, but I grew up in a, in an 11 it's not DEI related. Really. In Burbank, California, with four siblings in one bedroom. In Burbank. Yeah. And now they're talking like. Oh, uh, hold on. In, sorry, in Burbank, super local stuff. I'm, I'm sorry, but. I'm gonna in fast Burbank, forward a bit. Of South Central being told that you have to excel ten times harder than the next person, but they're not part of the culture <laughs> to say that you can actually come to disparities. Yeah, this is getting very far regionally specific. specific. You have to work ten times harder coming from South Central, based on, for example, test scores. Obviously, not true. We've had affirmative action programs in this country for solidly. But now years. affirmative action is gone. It's out the door. Now DEI is program. present. DEI is actually saying that we need to have diversity, equity, and inclusion. So you're actually putting a footing in the door for different races, different genders, different women, different men, That's everything. So now you're saying that because this program is gone, this one isn't. Sorry, you've been voted out by the majority. Please. Okay, return. they voted him out. Yeah, affirmative action is like the old uh, phrasing for what is now yeah, referred to as DEI, rabbit. sort of. DEI isn't that. necessarily the same thing Hi, as affirmative okay. action, nice to meet you. but nice to meet you. it's the same for Republicans. So, um, I kind of want to shift the conversation about DEI a little bit away from culture because I don't know if that's necessarily like Good a move. helpful conversation Do not to have. sit in and Ben really Shapiro's framing. About representation. So, uh, representation. five Americans currently is Hispanic. This country, like it or not, is not a homogenous country. We are a very diverse country. Mm -hmm. Do you not think that our legislators should be representative of the overall population? Uh, I don't see a way that you can have a, it's a reasonable statement legislature with 435 members of, of Congress. In but the country of there's nothing in here that Ben that up, needs to grant. He can just refer to like gender, logistical realities of achieving what's being talked about. What the representative group, the legislature is not normal normally something that DEI so reflects on example, or Jewish, is meant to reflect Jews on. Jews are actually overrepresented in Congress. I don't think that, that we ought to decide exactly how many people in Congress are Jewish based on the Jewish population of the country. I think that's a, that's actually a pretty silly way to do representation. Ben's well, we just correct here, actually. But fundamentally, there is an issue with the fact that we are not fully represented. Like, the entire population is not represented. I mean, we have not never had a black female president. Yeah. I still have to pay taxes. We've never had The a whole president. concept is no taxation without... Well, we have had a white male president. We've had, yeah. like... What, did, I mean, what, what, what Ben snuck in there is a little hard to catch. I believe he said we've never had a Jewish president. Nobody cares. Um, yeah, um, Ben has Ben has kind of the right here. We can't pot, like we're not going to have a Chinese president anytime soon. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take for us to have a Hispanic president. The idea that the presidency itself has to be representative, has been sort of that's just like logistically so difficult. We do. Okay. It's not so, really I mean, a big it depends deal. Depends according to whom. And that's it's not an effective argument. Okay, so basically everyone, it's a religion. It, 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 do you, do you not agree that you are a white man? I mean, I think that it depends on, on the context in which we're discussing it. Meaning so what are you, Ben? Are you not a white guy? I mean, I'm, I'm a man are of you? Jewish ethnicity, which is sometimes grouped with white and sometimes not. I mean, that's the more accurate way to put it. But So Ben is technically correct here. There are certain spheres that don't consider Jewish people to be white, which is something that a lot, like, a lot of people may not know that because you have to, like, be aware of a certain amount of racism to know that that is sometimes considered different. Ben is also being a little deliberately obtuse, but it doesn't really matter very much. This is not a, a productive well, line of argumentation or discussion. With Jews, who are eth which, is an ethnicity, which is an ethnicity. I mean, So yeah. you're not white at all? I mean, again, it depends who's doing the grouping and how. I've seen it. Her trying to clarify on this is wasting time. I've seen, and are, are we just pretending that doesn't exist? That, that's, that's a reality. However, this is this is her trying to reach for some kind of gotcha instead of engaging with Beth. Point, which is that we are supposed to identify people by group identity. If we don't have a black female president, somehow black females have not been represented. So Barack Obama was in no way representative of black females because he's not a female. No, he's he black. was. He was representative. So but he that's was half the point. representative. How do you how do you do the math on this? 
and why. You shouldn't do the math on it completely statistically, but the fact is, you shouldn't is, do the math on it at all. You should, you should treat people as individuals. You should treat people as individuals. Well, if you don't even want Kamala Harris to attempt to create DEI initiatives in office, then there isn't even going to be a conversation. That is correct. The idea that the idea Ben is presenting is that we're not allowed to make an attempt. We're not allowed to try the math. So that's the way. That's part of the way of making an effective argument against Ben is by noting. Ben, you are cutting this off before looking at any research. We're not actually talking about the research of whether or not there is racism or what kind of equity is effective. We're not talking about how we could effectively do diversity and inclusion. You're just saying diversity in equity and inclusion is somehow essentially destructive as like a policy uh, direction or as a policy motivation about it. I mean, uh, I don't think there ought to be a conversation about why we ought to be represented. I don't think there ought to be a conversation about representation. Ideas, and if that person represents my He's able to go into this because the earlier framing was about representation rather than being about inclusion. Ideas, I don't care what The idea sex, isn't necessarily that there needs to I mean, be to a representative extent, yes, of black people, of Jewish people, or so on and so forth, but that those to people to need to be and legislate for involved. The people that are living I, in this country. I, I, was not Do you aware, not believe that? I was not aware that empathy is, is relegated to particular race solidarity. No, but I mean... It that is Ben talking some bullshit because empathy is another trigger word for Ben. It's easier to be empathetic to people them. whose experiences you can fundamentally understand based on your identity. Like, do you not believe that people have an inherent bias? So first of all, based I'm not sure. I mean, we can start with the empathy itself. I'm not sure that empathy is always the best basis for, for actual public policy, because when you have group solidarity and empathy based on group solidarity, you're going to attempt to actually benefit. So Ben is kind of hinting at like, mm, you're doing a reverse general. racism on me. How dare you? Representation in government. OK, she's being swapped out. So this is, again, why to get through to Ben, you have to frame things around Jewish people, because otherwise he thinks you shouldn't be empathetic. You. But if you ask Ben, Ben, should we maybe be empathetic towards the suffering of the Jews? He should say yes. Well, he got it this time. Got all right, got nice. It. Good to see you. How are you doing? Doing all right. How are you, Ben? You know, it's been a day. I think I might have seen this kid on social like media. It's an interesting setting being surrounded by 20 people that disagree with you. I mean, the, the okay, truth kids is may be a little derogatory of me, but he's definitely a young guy. So I'm, I'm a little used to it. It's, 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 uh, yeah. I've, Any, I've been any, here before. Anyways, let's talk about uh, DEI. Do you think that Trump should have won 2016? Uh, I'll I mean, wrap it in. It's going to be a fun little intro. I'll demonstrate the relevance. Okay, sounds good. I've so, seen uh, the start uh, of this bit. By what measure? Do I think he did win or do I think he should have won? Do you think he should have won? I mean, yes, I'm happy that he won. If the question is, am I happy that he won? I'm happy that he won. Okay. Well, I'd say that Trump won 2016 because... By the way, I did not vote for either candidate in 2016. That's a decision made in retrospect. Awesome. So uh, I think that Trump won 2016 because of a modality of DEI. Uh, essentially, what I'd say is the Electoral College, right, strives for inclusion this of is a good novel with point. lower populations by over-representing them in the overall vote. Um, like, you could correct me if I'm wrong, or the sand fact checkers. This can. is an I'm interesting sure argument that, though, to make. Over the last 25 to 30 years, Republicans have won the presidency given the Electoral College, not given the overall popular vote. So, if you're against DEI, if you don't want inclusion on the basis of race, and the Electoral on College the basis of gender, is an equity or policy. Or even what you're saying earlier, we could even say inclusion on the basis of class. Why do you want inclusion on the basis of population, rural areas, states, etc.? We et should actually use a better. And, hmm. There is an assumption being made about Ben's view, because Ben was not asked the question, do you think the Electoral College is good policy? He was asked the question, do you think Donald Trump should have won? But now he's being treated as though he gave the answer that he thinks the Electoral College is good policy. So the way this uh, argument should have been capped off is, Ben, do you think it should be like this? Do you think we should get rid of the Electoral College because it is an equity policy? For example, I just ask if I believe in the U.S. Senate. Right, uh, the U.S. The US Senate, Senate this example. would also apply to the U.S. Senate. Right, okay, so let's use the U.S. They Senate shift to the Senate. The Senate is actually even yeah, more right. unrepresentative of the general population than the Electoral College, which is at least a rough approximation. It'd just be funnier to hear you say that you shouldn't have voted for Trump in 2016, but we could talk about the I mean, that, that's, well. a, that's a different subject, but yeah. I'm very happy that he won, even though I didn't vote for him. I mean, we can talk about Trump later. Yeah. I've already done yeah. it. Yeah. We'll, I'm sure we'll do more. Just Joe, um, you'll as stop. As far that's fine. as the idea that, that every 
elected body. It has to be elected based on population as opposed to based on the area of geographic distribution or the states that actually preexisted the federal government. Okay, the way that the Constitution of the United States was created was as a contract between sovereign states, which is one of the reasons why, for example, you have a United States Senate as opposed to just a House of Representatives. Ben is appealing to the way it is, um, which doesn't matter because the conversation doesn't need to be about the way things are. The conversation is about the way things should be because we're talking about what kind of policies do we want to look at? What kind of policies do we think we're good? Uh, do we think are good? A policy existing is not justification for the policy. A policy existing doesn't mean that it's a good policy. We could have bad policy in whatever place. So the fact that so this is the way it is, DEI it's not a good argument. Stretch to me. Well, the kind of DEI that I'm talking about specifically would be separating human beings based on inherent characteristics, like, for example, race, as opposed to suggesting that the United States Senate, which is obviously unrepresented. So Ben is saying, like, hey, yeah, DEI is, DEI is um, separating people on the basis of race, so it's racist. Any anti-racist policy or any policy that says you cannot be racist would also fit under the category of things that Ben is arguing against, and somebody should mention that to Ben. ...of the general population well, in many Well, seemingly ways. my point it's, is... It's it's just a, a check and balance, right? Well, seemingly my point is, is that this is another modality of DEI. I've, like, no problem with you explaining to me, right, why the Senate or the Electoral College would be given the U.S. Constitution and, like, some contractual agreement that they had between the sovereign states, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. But what I'd say is that your claim here would just imply that the Constitution upholds DEI within our electoral process. If, if your claim is... So do you think that the Constitution upholds DEI in the sense of including smaller real, states with less that, representative that, 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 populations? That is, a, that is a true stretch of the meaning of DEI. But I, I get your point. I mean, if the idea is that it's the about inclusion, not pure DEI in a democratic context, it is only a little bit of a stretch. Popularly represented votes, then I think so. The, ben makes DEI necessarily about race, and because well, I'm not making a case. It doesn't have to be. Place it with. DEI can be about whole DEI. culture. DEI about, right, can be about location. DEI can be about geography. In the case of the electoral college, or in the do we include people from Montana? Different conversation. Not many of them. Are these systems upholding DEI? So again, I think that you're definitionally stretching DEI. If DEI is the basic idea that all disparities equal discrimination, there's the thing. Ben says you're stretching the idea. No, Ben. You are stretching the idea. Ben, you are stretching the idea by saying this is what the idea is. You are presenting the idea in pre-stretched. Must be rectified by government interventionism, which is sort of the definition. And stretching that to mean the Electoral College seems like you're going pretty far afield to defend a very broad Ben, why are you the authority on what applies. DEI Wait, means? Wait, one second. I, I don't think that we need to say that DEI is equivalent to disparities equal discrimination. We could just see that a, a DEI is a, like a qualm for disparities in general, right? Um, and what we apply there here we go. modality when we're talking about the Electoral College, when we're talking about the Senate, Yeah, it's a qualm for disparities in general. Disparities of the lack of population in rural areas. We're I've never heard somebody use the word qualm like that. Smaller states compared to so, larger states. And seemingly, me, you haven't really given get me a response response to this apart from calling it a stretch, but I do appreciate you for it. No, I mean, it's, it's, it point. seems to me like the argument that you're making is that in order for there to be calm and and sort of conciliation inside the United States, particular racial groups have to be given particular benefits. Okay, well, because that was the argument with regard to the No, because the kid's not saying racial groups. He's just saying general. States, Generally, like States, whatever group, when the, when the formed, if there's any disparity, there can be a disparity the between Alabama and Mississippi. Not going to sign on unless they got Maybe we should do something about it. Of the interests of those particular there can be a disparity States, between Virginia and California. Then the response that I would have is right. A disparity between Nebraska so and Texas. With regard to DEI and, for example, the racial context, you then have to make the case that the only way that you can have conciliation in the United States is for particular racial groups to be given specific racial benefits, and otherwise the country is going to split apart. Which is an argument with which I generally disagree. Even you could give a benefit to everybody below the poverty line, because that is a group. <clears throat> that is a group that may be deserving of equity. If I agreed with the with the way the Constitution was formed. Yeah. So I mean, I don't see like your parallel here, right? I think that DEI could exist in, in multiple modalities. My argument, in a nutshell, is nothing more than the fact that we see disparities existing in rural areas. DEI could exist in multiple areas. Areas. modalities. Modalities, disparities between metropolitan and rural. And you're qualming. This is all good direction. Right. I wish this guy had more time to talk. DEI resolving that would not be like through uh, like an over representation. And the DEI. And I understand that your argument is, but all my my single-handed point here.
This is the correct time to talk over Ben. Good choice. I would say in some sense that this is a reconciliation to introduce more, uh, like uh, to introduce more well, uh, equity. Not diversity. I mean, not, inclusion not, not, in the sense of inclu a state more inclusion, more equity. Yeah. I mean, so if that's you make the concession doing. that this is DEI, would you say in the same sense that we shouldn't have I, I don't make the concession DEI that that falls within okay. the definition of DEI that I've used. And if your claim is that I'm your, now your definition is wrong. subsidies to rural areas at the expense of urban areas, I'm not actually. So do you think that DEI would only apply in the context of race? Uh, no, it could apply in the... There you go! Exactly! No, that's the entire argument Ben has been making, that DEI only applies in the context of race. In the context of class. It could apply okay, in the if, it, if it could apply in the identity, context of, of race, identity. class, and identity, why can't it apply in the context of a state's population and their representation in our government? I mean, if they were to receive special bennies at the expense it's a special of, of the members of the population. They are. The they population. are. Yes, like Alabama or Arkansas are literally no, receiving, receiving special benefits insofar as a greater no, level so of representation in our Senate and in electoral no, processes that, that, compared to people in California. I mean, for instance, to, that's my... To, one second. That's my buddy Parker. Parker over there, he lives hey, Parker, in he do? lives in California, <laughs> right? And I and, I'm totally and, and I live in Colorado. Colorado. Senate work, dude. So I literally have more representation, person for person, in the sense of Parker's vote compared to my vote, uh, because individualistically speaking, I'm from a state that has more representation. And the same thing could be said for multiple other states across America, especially it, in the Senate. I'm just, there's I'm two senators that represent from, me, and everyone yeah, else. Ben's in destroyed. I, 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 he's I, got no recovery here. Uh, uh, he's he, he granted the position. California has two senators, and Colorado has two senators. To point B. He granted the position that you can have DEI that's not essentially about race after spending 19 minutes insisting that DEI was about race. Um, ben abandoned his stance, um, and that is that should be the entire takeaway. You could pare this all down to the one bit, and uh, you, you could have maybe two bits. You have the bit where Ben gives his initial stance on what DEI is, and you have here where he is forced to abandon that position and accept the other position. This could have been done earlier on if you just say, like, Ben, what's DEI? And Ben gives this thing that, like, all disparities are necessarily this and, like, the race or whatever. It's like, uh, Ben, are there, um, like, if, if, a, if there's a cultural disparity or we do this, or, like, geographical disparity is a very good way of covering it. Um, which is that we should because it doesn't give Ben the, the fallback on like culture. Because Ben's not willing government. to make an that argument very, that very people in Alabama and, and like get from point a are point culturally B different, and that should result in some difference. Seems like you're going pretty far afield. I, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but you know the rubber band only goes so far. That's the end of this claim. Rubber band only goes so That's far. Right. I appreciate it, man. Hopefully, Thanks. we can talk more. I hear what you're I think I've seen that guy in another Jubilee segment where he handled himself very well. Um, I don't remember who he was talking to about what. I think it was a bit about maybe abortion rights. With Charlie Kirk. My I think he talked to, to Charlie Kirk. His extreme pro-abortion stance is morally indefensible. Ooh, let's go into abortion. All right. Uncomfortable. What's going on, dude? Hey, good to meet you. Okay, so I just What's want to extreme about because, sure. Kamala's stance? Okay, so the claim kind that of. I'm making yes. about Kamala Harris, is, let's first say like what her, what I believe her position. I'm probably to be saying so she has not stated any Kamala any wrong law that she Kamala? would not veto. I, I know it's an right, emphasis so they, they, they thing, and I believe I have the wrong emphasis example, all the time. Or late-term abortion bans, she would presumably veto that as president of the United States. That's mm -hmm. the position that I'm taking in this particular prompt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the position that I find morally indefensible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, I'm a very, very pro-life person. But I can see at least the the sort of nuanced arguments that some people on the left try to make about abortion, even if I disagree with those mm -hmm. arguments. So we're beyond the point that I've pre-watched through. So now I can just like come at it without knowing what the arguments are that are going to be made. So if Ben Shapiro presents me with this position, what I'm going to say is like, Ben, if you make the government the authority on whether or not a late term abortion occurs, that means even with exceptions. That means that a doctor-patient scenario where they need to perform a late-turn abortion for medical reasons is then open to mali malicious legislation uh, or malicious litigation. Litigation is the word. Is then open to malicious litigation from huge moneyed bodies of people who want to stop all abortion forever. Uh, and that, uh, and we see right now, that kills women. So if you don't allow, if you put the government in that state, you are making women die. That's just the way it works. Um, you, have to, you have to hold the position on abortion 
that it is a doctor's choice. Uh, otherwise, um, you have all this malicious litigation and people get killed. Now, uh, Ben then has to hold the idea that this kind of litigation is not malicious, that this kind of litigation is for the purpose of, um, you know, preserving the life of the mother, uh, or not preserving the, preserving the life of the child, yada, 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 yada. So then you could get into the violinist argument <clears throat> that um, uh, in order for uh, abortion to be wrong, um, the fetus needs to be a kind of entity that is uniquely privileged over all other uh, like living human beings because there's no other situation with a living... There's no situ situation where a living human being is entitled to another human being's blood. And the argument that a pro-abortion advocate needs to make is that at some point, a fetus is entitled to the blood of the mother. And that make, means the fetus is a uniquely privileged being. Um, they're not necessarily unwilling to make that argument. I think they're totally willing to make that argument. But I think that's a good argument for the pro-abortion point argument to stand on. Making, which is effectively abortion until birth should be in no way regulated. I find that to be morally indefensible. Mm -hmm. My understanding right now is that a majority of Democrats would not support abortion through birth. My understanding is the the more popular position. I don't think any state lets you go through birth. Maybe I'm off on that. Maybe there's a couple. Okay, um, California and New York, actually. Okay, understood. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, I think the key claim is, is basically, I think most Democrats would want abortion within the first few weeks prior to the development of my personal moral... I do think that the majority Democratic argument is probably abortion for about the first six or seven months. I think most Democrats um, wouldn't make an argument uh, about repealing bans on abortion in like the the if you're if we're getting into the third trimester, I think more Democrats get shaky on it. They're moral cowards. Starting point of life is that the mind is the seat of consciousness. The brain is the you know is where yourself is. If you replace your heart, you have a robo heart. You're chilling. If you replace your brain, you're a different person. You're dead. Um, and I think that when that brain first starts to develop, that's sort of where I see the beginning of life and where the fetus gets their first uh, moral consideration. Would you agree that abortion before? Walking Ben away from his position, because Ben has characterized the Harris campaign with having a certain position. Walking him away from that position and saying that's not what a majority of Democrats are about is a reasonable way of approaching this. Where that point is tolerable? Uh, no, I don't agree with that, mm -hmm. but... Uh, again, Quick question, just as far as defining the positions. Yeah. So would you agree that late-term abortion I would, is indefensible? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I, I, that's not my position. I would okay. not support so, I mean, that. So, so you actually Somebody else yeah. should jump in at this okay, point. So now, now we get into the broader okay. abortion conversation. Yep. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, No worries. That's totally cool. Yeah. So, yes. No. I, do, you, do you feel like a majority of Democrats support through, like, I would be red a majority flagging before here. birth? Uh, a majority like, of Democrats nope. have not supported any We need a real, abor a real champion of abortion in here. In my entire lifetime, nor do I suppose that they will. So if there were to be a, a consensus 15-week abortion ban, for example, which is about the status in, in Europe, uh, I, I would assume that virtually all Democrats would vote. Consensus 15-week would be um, still second trimester. Against that 15-week abortion ban. Mm -hmm. So, they, so well, 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 you know, I may agree with your more moderate position, or at least use that as a starting point. Mm -hmm. uh, I, that, that is certainly not where the Democratic Party historically has been, nor is it where the Democratic Party is right, right now. Awesome. Understood. Mm -hmm. And just to uh, understand where you begin your moral consideration for a fetus. Now, where I consider it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at conception. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I believe in life, that life begins at conception. You now okay. have... This is a good point to um, clarify. This is a good clarification. Being. You do want to find out from your opponent where they actually stand on this before you get to other arguments. So Ben is holding at conception. At conception is incredibly, incredibly hard to defend because, like, at conception, Ben might have to come out as against IVF, which looks really crazy. He might have to come out as against birth control, which is also very crazy uh, because if you're saying, like, it also depends on where you draw the line at conception. I've seen some people who say that conception is not complete until uh, proper implantation in the womb. Um, and so that person believes that it's still okay to provide um, abortive treatment for a um, uh, an ectopic pregnancy. And if you, if you think that it is not okay to provide um, uh, abortive uh, care for an ectopic pregnancy, you should be punched in the face for having that stance. 
And then the question is exactly she could further clarify on what Ben thinks about that, possibly about what he considers conception to be. Interest to, for example, a woman's quote unquote right to choose. Once you once you acknowledge there's an independent interest. Thank you so much for your time. Probably a good swap. I'm I'm hoping to see somebody out who is um, more pro-abortion. You're good. You can relax. Hi, how are you? Doing well. How are you? Hello. Um, nice to meet you. Uh. Oh, wow, you look better in person. Okay, so. That's very sweet of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't often get that, so thank okay, you. Okay, it's fine. Look better um, in yeah, person uh, is crazy. So yeah, uh, how do you define abortion really quickly? Uh, abortion would be the forcible termination of, a, of an unborn human life. Yes, but like, why do you hold that definition? Like, uh, uh, would you not as, like assume like something like a like a C-section would be considered an abortion? No, because the baby is is born alive. So but I'm a how big, would that be an abortion? Why would why do, what is the definition of abortion? This is a weird point. Death of a fetus. Because that's literally the definition of abortion. It literally isn't though. Where are you getting this definition from? Where are you getting your definition? From? She's she's. Uh, like, I think like, she's like, technically like, correct like, on this. Like Mayo Clinic, like any any fucking like hospital. You yeah, I think I think the technical definition for abortion is, um, any any removal of uh. The, the fetus, baby, whatever, um, from the from the womb, but I think she's actually being a bit pedantic. <laughs> um, she's being a bit pedantic, but it's actually important because, right, but like I said, but abortion, malicious I litigants. But abortion, but abortion generally, yeah, I understand this. I'm here. I'm talking to you. I know, baby. That's how I was not aborted. <laughs> I, know, I understand this, but like, yes, but like, no. Well, yes, but like, no. <laughs> but no. Uh, uh, you could say you could simply say that abortion is simply the ending of a pregnancy, right? So the ending of a pregnancy no. outside of the natural you can't say that. Uh, birth of a fetus. So no. I don't see that. Uh, yeah, I don't think this that, like, point of hers happened. is very That's productive. She's not trying to meet Ben halfway, and you don't always need to meet Ben halfway, but you should meet him a little closer than this. Processes that would say like, okay, like she needs some type of induction that doesn't include the actual natural expulsion of a fetus, but it doesn't always end in the death of a fetus. I don't see how you could say that her Kamala Harris's stance is immoral. I just don't understand how you're removing the. It's very clear that Kamala that Kamala Harris's stance is. Um, in favor of allowing the death of the fetus through a medical procedure. Let's just not talk about the word abortion. Let's talk about the forcible termination of a baby. Okay, so then what do you value in the fetus then? Forcible termination of a baby. Okay, so then what is You said it's because of conception? Yes. Why is that? Because that is literally the biological definition of when an independent life begins. Yes, but like, why does it have That's not, that's not correct. Because that's literally the biological definition of when a human life begins. That is not the biological definition of when a human life begins. Will have moral value. I would value sentience. But why? Right, because this is simply, this is She goes for sentience. Like, is it okay to like unplug like a brain dead patient, for example? I mean, the the question is whether it's okay to unplug a brain dead patient. Actually, quite a controversial one. sort of. This is a bad, this is a bad segue. As far as why, I'm just wondering if. It's what you should say lot. is just you know um, what you off. should say you here know, is not them. about a, a an appeal to a brain dead person or something like that. You say like a fetus at conception has no brain. That's not a person uh, uh, like that is not a person that is not biologically like life necessarily like to say that that is biological life is like saying, you know, that's an amoeba like. It, it doesn't it doesn't seem clear that we should value that the way we value well, a human yet, being. We know that there's future sentience there. Like so she puts like the line of, at like, um, past, sentience. Like, I'm sorry, past, present, I, or future I, sentience. I mean, but I, like I, a person in a coma uh, has has. I agree. Uh, and, and, and jumping to the coma patient, also have I've seen a lot of guaranteed future um, sentience. Well, I've seen no, a lot of pro life people try to jump to the coma patient like it's some kind of win. Like a coma patient is somehow similar to pre pre brain fetal tissue. They're not at all the same. You know what? Go for it. All right. Let's hear it. You know what, what do we got? Just for, honestly, God, just for that, I forfeit. That's like some serious effort oh, wow. right there. Well done. <laughs> really well done. Thank you. Yeah, so on the topic of abortion, He's got some respect. I think we have a big focus on the moral aspects of abortion, but I do think we should talk about the legal aspects of life because when a baby... The legal aspects. Thank you very much. Birth certificate, social security card, when there are fetus, I mean, when it's like cells in the body, you don't get the birth certificate. You don't get a social security card because... Referring to it as cells in the body yet, is when apt. It to like the moral repercussions of it's a good abortion, it's a good like it's a good a, subtle shift of what exactly we're talking about different than legally because if a you do not have to grant them the framing was a, equivalent to a baby i should be able to have tax deductions on that kid i should be able to have child care from the government i should be able to have child support from the father but since so the government like the clusters of cells and not legally not recognized baby, like morally or hasn't you can the government has legally, never legally recognized um, so the state of a pregnancy. The legal positivist position, I think, to shield against the morality here is a problem, and I'll tell you why. Okay. So when, when it comes to, first of all, don't threaten me with a good time. I'm perfectly happy to have people pay paternity for children that are that are currently in utero. Okay. Like that, that's fine with me. In fact, I think that'd be quite good. I think it would incentivize yeah. fathers. Yeah, yeah. Ben's not swayed by this, and it makes sense that he's not swayed by this. He wants to talk the morality, status, and that's fine. In the States, for um, example, who don't have legal status right now, who don't have a social security card, for example. Like it's reasonable States, to confine this to the moral argument. 
they're they're legal immigrants. We shouldn't murder them. You know, there there are lots of people in the legal status. Does not this is probably the point when this person should swap in any sense of the term. I mean, that, that it's true, for example, because this argument is not going to work. Don't with actually that. have control over any of their decision making. Right. I have four kids of my own and I control their decision making because they're very small. Mm -hmm. OK, that mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I get to kill them. So the idea of legal Nothing status, different. I did, different. thus being the basis of a moral status is putting the cart before the horse. The truth is that it's because the things have a moral status that we give them a legal ben status. Ben is correct on this, yeah. state by state, right? For example, we should generally state, argue they morals, not laws. Lacey's law for a while, I think it's still applicable, where if somebody killed a pregnant woman, that could be treated as a double homicide in criminal law. Okay, that, that sort of stuff applies all over the United States. So, so using the legal as a substitute to, to sort of evade the moral question ignores the fact that people make law in the states based on what their moral perception of, of the of the issue is. The law follows the moral perception, not the other way around. Yes, I agree, but I think there is a problem with the moral perception, especially when you consider that morality varies all across America. It's not uniform anywhere. And that's a big problem, especially when you see in the South when they're having like six mm. abortion bans, which is detrimental to women's I don't health. Because as we see in like Georgia, this argument. Right you now, have to argue why it's immoral who were pregnant, to create who the, the hospital, ban. Get health care, and they were denied that care because there was confusion surrounding abortion laws. That's okay, why so she's kind of getting aspect, to it, that's something that's but there are better that's ways of approaching known. this. Immoral, what you need right? to say is that passing the law in a certain uh, way, comes to sort of creates we, we immoral scenarios. Of those particular Georgia cases, one of them particularly has been relatively badly covered. It's about a woman who took basically both doses of, of the abortion medication. Uh, she took it without the supervision of a doctor. Uh, she then experienced essentially sepsis, and she went to the hospital late. And then under no interpretation, by, by this point, both of, she, she had twins. Both of the fetuses were unfortunately dead by this point, so there actually was no legal problem with performing a DNC at that time, and the hospital misinterpreted the law. You know, but without getting into more details about that particular case, why? Why did the hospital act based on? Why did the hospital act in a certain way that endangered a life based on a misinterpretation of the law? Maybe it's because when you open the door for malicious litigation of hospitals, you create bad health outcomes, and maybe doing that, creating that framework, is immoral was and always will be how we weigh two separate considerations. One is the moral value of the life of the fetus. And the second if is you create a framework right that causes the people is, to die, sort of have you done something bad? Meaning that I don't have a right to choose about your life, right? About whether yes. I get to kill you or not. Or so about the, the way we create have. the framework does matter. Uh, and, and so the right to choose is obviated by the acknowledgement of a moral status on the part of the child and vice versa. Right. If, if you if you're willing to say that the child has no moral status, whatever, then there really is no problem with abortion. The, the big it's like, would you be willing to concede, Ben Shapiro, that wherever we set the law and whatever we decide, if the doctor says that he's followed the law, how about we don't check? Could we do that? Can we trust the doctor to uh, can we trust the doctor as the authority on it? He has to say no. Big moral problem yes. I have with the sort so of got, okay. So you've created you've created through the law an externality that will cause people to die. That's evil. I think I think I got I think I got the I got the judges okay. over here. All right. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you. Ben. Plus, I'll see you again later, dude. All right. Almost nice had our our, our, uh, hey, our hey. winner back, but this hey, is a new uh, uh, this is a new guy. Appreciate you being here and, and having an open discussion. Yeah, you bet it's fun. Let's say that just hypothetically. I'm getting to the right? burnt popcorn Baby's now. Baby's born. Mm -hmm. Baby, mama can't feed the baby. She's not breastfeeding. Baby, this is not a good argument. Morally, do you feel like that would be better than if the baby would have just been like? You give it up for adoption. You put it into child protective services. There's like so many answers to this. Abortion. Once the child is born, it's Before a person. It was born. I mean, I'm I'm not sure that there's any. I mean, I think that it's significantly worse to purposefully kill a, a child rather than accidentally or through circumstances. Yeah, it's, sig not, it's not, significantly not worse. Right? She can she there are no food stamps. There's, there's yeah. literally nothing. Ben is looking to clarify. He's like, and the baby's going why, isn't, is that equivalent why isn't adoption part of this discussion? To, you know, because she doesn't want the baby freaking herself evidently. This because it was born. Be Duh. Born like, that get out of here. That, you can't make that argument. No, that's a different problem. You just get that solved. Morally. Superior to killing them? Yes. To, before born. Yes, so it is morally. Like yeah, mistreating somebody is morally, morally superior, superior to killing them, trivially. If you can't, if you're, if the only way you survive is food and water. Yeah, it's and you really bad. Provide that to you. And I, well, okay, we're gonna take this chair. Oh man, okay. Power right, move. Like a bro, my friend. All right. How's it going? Let's break open. So, a, uh, first a beer question: or Can okay. men get pregnant? 
Men cannot get pregnant. Okay. Awesome. Mm, I don't. I don't think I like the direction this is going because I don't know how this links back into the morality of abortion. So uh, I don't know how you talk about abortion uh, and the morality of abortion in a better way by um, getting to uh, you know trans definitely. specificities. Uh, do men experience essay sexual assault? Sure. Got it. Yeah, easy trivia. What about the existence of trans men? What, what about the existence? Uh, do you mean what about it is correct? What are you getting at? What are what are we talking about here? Men, now Ben's Ben's euphoria. awful so on the trans stuff. Ben Ben does not believe that like trans people uh, yeah. exist. Basically, in, in I'm, I'm going to need more specifics on what you mean by what. Well, here, let me give it to you, Ben. Sure, please. So I'm a transgender man. Okay. I've experienced SA. Okay. And abortion rights affect me directly. So. If we're talking about the American Interesting. Dream okay. Live, so, why don't I have access to that? Because there's no legislation, what, in the history of America that legislates a man's body, so why does mine have to be legislated? I've got a vagina. Um, I'm not interested in what your genitalia are. Clearly you are. I mean, it's all over uh, everything I'm, I'm, you I'm, make, no, buddy. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I that is a that is a reasonable gotcha for Ben Shapiro. I hate to say it to you, but... I think you can read on my face that I radically am not. Have. I think you can read on my face that I radically am not. When we're talking about abortion, no, I, don't. The, the, I mean you can present it here. This is unrelated to the current the discussion. And this is a good way of attacking Ben Shapiro. It's a bad you, way of making the argument. Man of twenty years, I'm, got I a wife. Recognize that you exist. I disagree right, with your claim so that you're a male. Right. So if I was sexually assaulted, right, and I didn't have access to that abortion care, do you believe that I should have carried that that child to term because I was sexually assaulted? I mean, the so. No, I just want to make. So the way of entering this argument, first off, is you need to clarify that Ben is against exceptions for uh, rape, incest, so on and so forth. So the first thing you do on this is not like approach it from the trans angle. You have to go at a, at a preamble for that is, do you think that abortion is acceptable in the case of sexual assault? Because if you don't establish that, um, you've got nothing to hold Ben to. Make sure that that's you're not you completing because as a the man, you're I've not setting the trap and springing it you're springing the trap right. without like Never, him stepping ever into it the conversation of what the entire time you jump from one this is a fair next. attack so on fast, Ben and I know how you work so how but it's not productive oh well, I mean mm -hmm. because I'm sick and tired of the shit that you have put against my community especially black trans women because you it's not a good use dis of the format of our needs, and then or the time. Upon when we're you can make a more effective argument for the, the morality of abortion. And, you want to focus and on you're trans failing on that you focus on to score points woman. against when Ben. I hate this. Situation. Pleasure to meet you. Okay, like, I'm sorry, that's childish. There's a lot of tension in the room now. Let's 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 stay cordial. Let's stay respectful, please, please, please. Yeah, yeah. It's not productive to just show up and have a tirade at Ben. Nice to meet you. So let's say that I get it. I'm Ben's terrible. My friends here, and I stand up and immediately collapse onto the ground. Uh, paramedics rush in, and through some magical means, they determine that the only person who can save my life is you. You can do that by giving me a transplant. Mm -hmm. Can you be forced to give me a transplant? I cannot. Why? Correct. Uh, because I do not have a parental relationship with you, and thus I do not owe you a duty mm. of care. So, so, so can you make a parent give a transplant? You are my son. Can a parent be forced to give a kid a transplant? Yes, a parent can. No, they can't. Can that's not correct. That's not legal. That's not, um, that has a very, very, very poor ethical grounding. Be forced to give a kid an enormous number of resources, or should be. Can you be forced to give me blood? No. Do you believe that the average person should be able to be forced by the government to do something with their body? Uh, it depends what, because that, that, why can that is you not be forced to give me? Why can you not be forced to give me an organ? Uh, be, because I do not owe you a duty of care sufficient to remove an organ Because from you me. cannot be forced to use your body to sustain my own. And that is the crux of because the Because I do not owe you a duty to because care. Because you cannot be used to use So he needs to pivot to match Ben's energy because Ben made a statement that's completely wrong. Um, you cannot force a parent to donate blood to their child. Um, that is not... A, that is not a legal burden. You could argue that a parent uh, should do that. You could argue that people should give to charity. You can argue that people have various duties that they are not legally obliged to. 
you can argue that um you can argue that parents have various uh legal like ethical duties to their children um but a lot of a lot of ethical duties parents might have to their children are not represented in law and i am not even certain if it's an ethical duty i think it's an ethical virtue um, but virtues and duties uh, are different. There's a gap. You cannot be forced to use your body to sustain my own, and that is the crux of the abortion argument. And the problem is, and it's very more. You're ignoring the parental no, relationship. But, but th because yeah. there's a point here. There's a very Ben's important. correct to point that out. He needs to get back to the parental relationship. More link your own. Then he needs to get within the parental part of the argument. A child that they do Ben is not Ben is making a clear exception here, but Ben's exception argument. is extra it legal. It doesn't matter how you get there. Let's say that you crash into me on the way out of here. Well, no, it's if actually, you, if you hit he's just restating the same argument. It it's uh, it's no longer helpful. He had a very good direction. This is the right way in. That that between the two bodies. So a better example would be the so-called dead violinist example or dying violinist. The dead violin. Yep, the dead violinist example. I can't remember her name. It's a good one. The basic idea there is that you wake up in a room and I'm connected to you, right? And you, you have some sort of health condition. Do I'm I have to the right to and disconnect I'm you? you a blood transfusion. And if I remove that, you'll die. Do I have a duty not to remove it? I think there's actually a fairly decent case that I actually do have a duty. No, you not do not. You do not have well, a duty you, to be forced to. No, why are you because you my did, moral position? You do not have. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, you do not have the government does not impart that duty. The government does not enforce that duty. Um, if you impl if you believe there's a duty, that's cute, but the question is whether or not we should have a law about that. Also, the question is whether or not it's extreme. It uh, because Ben's original position here is that com uh, is that the hair stance on abortion is extreme by allowing abortion. So if we get to the violinist argument, which ideally we would have gotten to the violinist argument with like 15 minutes left on the clock, so we could really drill into this. This is, this is a good one um, because Ben's stance is that the government needs to mandate that you stay connected to the violinist. Uh, and it should be up to you. It should be up to the person that's... The, the, the pro-abortion stance is it should be up to the person who is connected to the violinist. And it might be virtuous for them to keep the violinist connected, but that doesn't mean they're obligated to keep the violinist the connected. To My sustain moral someone else's body using your own. Thank you. I hope the next person follows up on this, uh, but they only have like a minute. Yeah. <laughs> no platitudes. You just have to get in there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm five. You made two. it. I'm the only one in the room shorter than you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, honestly, my understanding of Kamala's plan is a return to Roe v. Wade, but in the legislative level. That seems to be the majority opinion by the American people. This is a good move on it because he's pulling back on, like, hey, uh, Kamala's stance on this isn't extreme. Why are, you, why are you saying this is extreme when her stance is returning to the way the law worked for the last 50 years? So this is another good way of making the argument. I think you can either make this argument in that um, either abortion is morally defensible up to the birth of the child, uh, or you can go with the stance that uh, Kamala's stance on this is very reasonable. They were not for the removal, right? Trump is not really for an abortion ban, right? I mean, he in his himself personal level. Not. Okay, yeah, but unfortunately, you don't the need way to bring he up governs, Trump. he puts those three folks in the Supreme Court. They do it. His vice presidential pick really wants to do it. He's claiming now that people, everybody wants it to the states. Nobody wanted it. That, no, that was not the demand. I think people are just kind of interested in protecting their freedoms. It's a bigger discussion about freedom. And I think Kamala Harris is going to be the presidential pick to protect the freedoms. Okay, so again, I think that we have to define what we think Kamala Harris's position is. I think that yes, it goes you do. well beyond. Should have gotten into that Roe 20 minutes Wade, ago. For example, which is an extremely flawed legal decision. Uh, there has not been a statement of going past Roe v. Wade wide variety of legal scholars ranging from right to left. Ruth Bader Ginsburg well, used, to, well, used to point out that I that was a very flawed legal decision. We can't decision. pretend that like this is like a bipartisan thing, Roe v. Wade was a problem. The bipartisan thing no, was you might like the, you, might, you might like the results. You might I, like the results of Roe v. Well, Wade. I don't the have actual much, legal decision is listen, a bad legal listen, decision. I think that... That's the end of yeah, the you ran out of time. Unfortunately, there were two... <laughs> unfortunately, we had two talkers in the middle of that that kind of filibustered their way through or made arguments I found were really flawed. And it took too long for them to get replaced, so I think we weren't able to get into the meat of that point. And and once again, we're going back to uh, don't go for gotchas, don't mind read the other guy. Um, your goal is to communicate clearly. Your goal is to clarify, clarify, clarify. So um, clarifying 
Uh, the Harris position on this is a very good way to address this because I think Ben has a very poor foundation to assert what the Harris campaign wants to do regarding abortion when what they have said is they want to protect, protect abortion rights. If abortion rights were protected under Roe, which they were, that means they want to return back to um, the last 50-year standard uh, of how abortion was handled in the country. There's no way for that to be an extreme. So if Ben is necessarily saying that that is an extreme, morally indefensible stance, that's kind of an insane position. And now I think Ben has done well in terms of uh, creating content to present his position in the most like emphatic, strongest stance possible. It gives people more angles of attack um, by okay, saying yeah, extreme, yeah. morally hey, indefensible. Any further, we want to take a moment to say thanks so much to Straight Arrow News for powering the Don't fact checks care. in this video. It is Kamala Harris. Is Okay, border policies will turn America into an unsafe border and bankrupt nation. An unsafe this is an insane nation. point. Uh, and the right has been harping on this forever. And it's like the biggest, dumbest thing uh, that the right does right now. <laughs> I will let some Let's see how they are. So uh, the way I would argue about this, the first thing I want to say, um, first of all, you need to clarify what border policy are you talking about? Like, which element of the border policy do you think is bad? Ben is likely to respond that, like, she's for open borders or something like that, or they're doing this or they're doing that. So you could spend some time correcting Ben, possibly. But from the get-go, you need to clarify his stance. You need to say, like, what is, uh, is there a specific policy or is, are we talking about, like, a broad set of policies that is going to cause a cause an issue. And once you've set him down in a point, you can get to the most specific elements of this. Now he said unsafe and bankrupt. So I presume he's going to talk about um, theoretically crime and uh, theoretically like money spent on immigrants. But immigrants contribute more money than they take out and they commit less crime. So these are both really, really dumb points here in the circle really talk about why they appreciate Kamala Harris's right shift. I've seen this guy on Jubilee policy, before. Trying to deter the amount of people that are coming through the southern border. That's not something I'm particularly passionate about. So I'm, I'm more inclined to talk this about- This is right of this guy to you, say? Somebody who purports himself as someone who's uber capitalist, want to remove the labor pool from this country, which always increases to business and economic growth. Right. So I'm not interested in removing the labor pool from the country as a general yeah, rule. Yeah, However, you are. You are. I don't believe that's, that it's that's your position. economic benefit to the United States to bring in a low skill, low education labor pool. Low skill. Yeah, he gives them that look. From public benefits, for example. And there, there are very good data to show that there's huge reliance on, say, emergency rooms, educational facilities. Uh, based on the Center for Immigration Studies, there's a net cost to low-wage, low-skill immigration coming so into the country. So you're in favor with emergency rooms just deterring people based on what they look like or what might be perceived as someone with a lack of citizenship? No, I'm, I'm This is a pretty good way of cutting back in on that. Legal immigration to, to zero and then allowing a fair bit of, of legal immigration. With, so with you're, you're more interested in, in, in decreasing the pool of people and population in this country so there are less emergency room visits? Or are you more in favor of actually documenting these people so we're able to track like exactly who is coming through? Like, I'm, simply, I'm kind of it's lacking about, what you're it's, it's, it's not about number. It's about the people. That's a good in. that's a good clarification is do you want to just cut people down or are you more interested in making sure people are tracked? Republicans are not consistent about this because Republicans will say and they will voice that they just want legal immigration. They just want people to be tracked. But the actual way they do policies, the way they talk about people, they don't actually care about whether people are illegal or not. I don't think that necessarily applies to Ben because I haven't heard Ben talk about immigration very much. He's always usually talking about like trans stuff, abortion stuff, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, the fact that Ben keeps going back to like uh, low skill, low education um, is very annoying uh, for a lot of reasons because it gives him like a platform to stand on or a way to separate his statistics that isn't really fair. Uh, and it is suggesting that we vet every single person that comes across the border, which is unfortunately a concession Democrats have, have given. And Mason, the person talking to Ben right now, was correct to bring that up in the start, is that Kamala Harris's position on uh, 
I think I said I think I said uh, Kamala wrong again. I I, I oh my goodness. the Harris position on immigration is uh, to the right of where I would like it to be. We should be pro-immigration. And I believe we should, who comes we should be pro-all immigration. The it's all good. The people who are coming in, who are the Bring best, me your most useful to the American tired, your weary, your huddled masses. So do you think that the way that we do allow people in through our legalization process, especially with how much egregious obstacles people have to go through, might incentivize people to come through non-legal means? I mean, I... I on, on average, it takes about 10 years for somebody to gain citizenship in this country. And if somebody is fleeing political persecution, I really find it interesting how conservatives always like to talk about the response to certain behaviors instead of what the root cause is. When oftentimes, uh, this United is a good States way of approaching this discussion. Uh, it takes a long, this countries, countries, is a long walk. Is You're going to gonna take a long time to build this foundation, but it's a good way of addressing this. Matt Walsh was kind of schooled on this with Ryan Grimm, where he talked about specifically Haitian policy, where the government of Haiti has been destabilized over and over again by Western imperial nations. So that those citizens are trying to is it your, something with political I mean, is, is it your contention that anytime there's a destabilized nation across the world, even if the United States had a hand in it, then we then have a moral obligation to take in every citizen of that country who wishes to flee? No, I, yes. I think that's a huge straw man. I'm not saying that every single that person is a huge from straw a destabilized man, country needs to take refuge in the United States, but I think it's in, it's important to add that context. So I mean, you I think understand that, that, why people are coming here. That's a case for a different foreign place. policy. That's well, not a case for a di for an immigration the policy. The idea is people are coming in here. Uh, no, it, it is. It is. It's a case for um, immigration policy. I mean, uh, no, well, no, it's no, not no, true no, at all. That's, that's correct. Not, that's not that's right. your that's big contention. contention. You said literally that. You you went you went literally. For, okay, that's a hilarious pause frame for me. <laughs> uh, I'm that's a that's a thumbnail. Uh, that that's definitely a thumbnail. How do I how do I mark this in the recording? Uh, I don't know. Okay, but yes, um, Mason's completely correct here. Ben did make that argument earlier. He made that contention earlier that specifically that immigrants are a drain on emergency rooms. That was a specific point. I'm not claiming that the intent of people is to mooch off the system. The result of people is that they may be a net draw. The on result is that they mooch off the system. Contributor to the economy of the United States, or he's 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 United maybe States. correct to move off the word mooch. The word mooch might be a little unfair. United States, because I want people who are coming here who actually because have he didn't some sort say mooch in, say, originally. American style freedoms. I don't think everybody from all over the world has the right. same ideology. So, so as, you're, as you're aligning with Nick Fuentes that like a lot of these people just yeah. don't. <laughs> um. So Nick Fuentes, you know, huge Nazi. Uh. So like telling uh, Ben that he's aligning with the Nazis. Uh, it's true in a lot of cases. Uh, ben often makes the same arguments that Nazis make. Uh, this naturally bothers Ben. This is, this is my, like, hope, the ember uh, of, of the, the slightest inclination that someday, maybe 10 years from now, Ben Shapiro will recognize uh, what the hell he's doing and leave the right. Dude. Exact same dude. culture, dude. Madude. The madude. People don't have. Culture. He's going, they madude, madude. I, madude. I know that you're making yes. that face. Yes. I know that. I know that he's an individual that you guys obviously disagree. He's somebody that's like increases uh, calls for violence against people of certain communities. I'm not saying that you're Nick identical, Fuentes, but I'm saying on this issue particular, he literally see, makes videos trying to yes. stab me. So, yes. Yeah, 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 so yeah. yeah, yeah. So, say like, it, Ben. Say the, it, Ben. The stain I have for the exact ideology that you guys are in agreement. I don't for. understand why. Why it's the exact ideology that you're in agreement about. You do not think that people can assimilate their viewpoint. Of course, people can assimilate. But we ought to select from a pool of people who are most likely to assimilate. That doesn't mean that everybody has. A, do you think everybody on Earth has an equivalent ideology? To try and get into the country. We shouldn't screen. For so I think the um, idea here is that you're not supposed to prejudice whether or not somebody is able to assimilate. You're not supposed to make that prejudgment. You are not supposed to look at an Islamic person and say you are Muslim. That means you can't assimilate and therefore ban them. So. Um, that's the thing is, uh, you know, Ben is coming at this for like, we should be vetting people. And when he says that from very far out saying that, like, we should be vetting, we should be picking people from this pool. It doesn't necessarily sound discriminatory, but in practice, the policies that we see coming out about this, that are like the vetting policies are like, we should uh, not accept like, um, low education people. Maybe people have low education because the country that they're coming from has no money for schools because they've had to pay reparations to France for a hundred years after freeing themselves from slavery.
all should look into what's going on in Haiti. For ideology at all. What, how, how would you screen for ideology? Like a basic Yeah, how do you screen for ideology? Value when it comes to attributes? Sure. Why do you what screen for ideology? Like? I mean, I think that it would look very much like a citizenship test. But this this is not determining the ideologies of this person coming in. These are, this is a determination. I mean, they what, at least have to A citizenship test doesn't look like that. A citizenship test is about, like, civics knowledge. Understand that people can actually ask. No, but people would actually have to understand the yeah. basic ideology. How many, how many of the U.S.-born citizens do you think could pass a citizenship test? That's a reasonable question to ask. Uh, that was a very that was a pretty effective uh, set of stuff. Uh, I think you know, giving them a full four minutes. That's like one fifth the time. That's uh, probably pretty good. I doubt that there are more than five people in this circle of twenty who can make a better argument. Okay. Uh, this guy, um, I recognize him. He was from the slice that I skipped at the very beginning of the video. Uh, so let's see how this goes. So, Kamala Harris supports the bipartisan border bill that was negotiated by conservative Senator Gen James Lankford and supported by Mitch McConnell. Do you not support that bill? And do you uh, I do not support that bill. So what is your solution then? I mean, my, my solution is that- uh, He did state his solution in the last thing. Um, it is good to bring up the bill um, because theoretically- that means that her border policies are the same as the right-wing border policies, and that means that the right-wing will turn America into an unsafe and bankrupt nation. Actually ought not be done in a comprehensive fashion. So I have, I have a general critique of the way we deal with immigration in the country. Instead of trying to solve all problems at once, which is very likely to end in nothing, what you ought to first do is you ought to close the border. You mean solving all and problems? And the border is closed right now, do you agree? Uh, the border is certainly not closed what right now. What do you mean? There's a small trickle of people coming over. The numbers are similar to the end of the Trump administration, no? And, well, now because of executive order, they have been reduced significantly, but... Do you not agree not, that they're the same it, number at the end of the Trump administration? I, it, right now, yes, this is on a, a good monthly re basis, but yes. that's after letting in six and a half million illegal immigrants. So do you think Trump was failing then at the end of his administration? I, th I think that Donald Trump did a better job than Joe Biden. He certainly did not do a perfect job on illegal immigration. Ah, so Joe Biden is matching what Donald Trump is doing right now. So after you letting in Joe six, Biden? After letting in six and a half to 11 million illegal immigrants, well, I don't think you border, have to fill in that gap those are border, by doing like four months of good border policy. Those are border encounters. We don't know how many of those people were turned away. We don't know how many of those people are still in this that's country. That's correct. But those people make up a significant portion of our labor force as well, including in so, states like yours. Florida, where they make up like 5%. So, so your argument is that it's it's not happening and it's good that it is. It's not happening? What do you mean? That, that the illegal immigration pool is not very large and also it's good that it is large. I'm saying you guys make up numbers all the time. It's like that 20, 30 that's million. From, no, that, that's, that's from the Wall Street Journal. I'm not, I'm not making up that number. Well, Donald Trump said he wants to deport 20 million of these guys. What do you think of that? I mean, I, I think that if we were going to look at deportations, hmm. we obviously have to tranche that out based on criminal record. We ought to tranche it out based on usefulness to the economy. I think. Okay, that is not the Trump position. Trump position is not uh, that we tranche this out and that we do that because we already deport, uh, you know, people with criminal records. We ought to look at each person individually and determine whether they ought to be deported or not. So we already do that. That is probably going to lead to a small trickle of people being kicked out of here. So that's not going to accomplish your goal. Well, I mean, who said that my goal was to mass you. deport 20 million people so all you at want, once? So you want 20 million undocumented immigrants to stay in America? No, that I, I, no, that is not what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I failed to see how you got from, I would like to go through one by one in the same way that we do IRS tax forms for literally every American who pays taxes in the United States. This guy is just pivoting from gotcha to gotcha, but this is probably a reasonable case to do so because I don't think Ben is actually making a coherent uh, point. He's not making a point that anybody can argue against. There's not like, there's no principle to the argument that Ben is making because Ben is making the argument that uh, Kamala Harris's policies will be bad, but when you actually talk to him about what the policies are, he seems to want to do that, uh, do those same things. He says, like, we should deport people with criminal records. We do. Nobody's suggesting that we do anything otherwise. I don't think we should deport people with criminal records if they have a, like, if they've committed crimes, I think we should put them in jail. And once they've served their sentence, we should let them out of jail. I think that's just like, I don't see a reason to treat somebody differently in terms of our criminal justice system because they are or aren't a citizen. Just do the same thing you do for a citizen. Uh, if if jail, if, if prison, if prison is properly corrective, if I know it's not, but if if prison was properly corrective, if it's a you know fine punishment for the sentence, why is deportation necessary? Additionally, I don't get it, um, especially since immigrants commit less crime.
through illegal immigrants. I'd love to get back to the bankrupting so because we need to talk about how much taxes it's going to million people, And with what resources? Where are you going to detain them? How I are you going to get them out of the country? I mean, you'll detain them and you'll deport them, increasing the resources of ICE. The biggest problem ah, with regard ICE, to... Yes. Similar to the bill that was rejected by you and... Well, I mean, you're neglecting the part of the bill that allowed a baseline of 5,000 illegal immigrants border encounters before the executive branch automatically kicked in border enforcement. So I've been down don't to the you border, agree okay? Like the, the, I went down to the border, and let me tell you what I saw. Oh. The border, and then we can go, okay? So, okay. So, uh, saw with your ben own. Ben is looking, you know, Ben is now looking to, oh, I can move this. Oh, I didn't know. The, the, the scales are lifted from my eyes. I forget the origin of that um, idiom. I usually like to know uh, where idioms come from. Um, cool. I can do that. Um... So Ben is now looking to filibuster a little bit because he senses that he's on the back, back foot against this guy. Patrol because this guy has like successfully pivoted Ben into contradicting himself about three times. The way that the Biden administration was treating the border mm -hmm. for the vast majority of their term was to treat a claim of asylum without evidence as evidence that the person ought to be given asylum. So, and so, the so what is evidence for a claim of asylum? Um, it is, I came from this country. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in that country. Uh, we know which countries have a lot of stuff going on. I don't know what more evidence there is supposed to be. You could drill into that against Ben, but it seems like an opportunity for him to get into the weeds, so you probably First shouldn't go that way. was for Border Patrol to be activated to go to places where Mexican drug cartels were leaving people at the border en masse, and then to process those people and let them into the country within 72 hours. The goal so of this for the Mexican drug cartels was to clear large swaths of the border of Border Patrol agents specifically, so that in those unoccupied areas, fentanyl and drugs could then be passed, human trafficking. The immediate response, the majority of fentanyl comes in through legal ports. You know this, Ben. It's like, you cannot not areas. know this. So you mentioned these cartels. You agree these cartels are profiting off human trafficking, right? Of course. So why don't we open up legal means for these people to come in here? Then they don't have to give the cartels money. They're making So the way of phrasing this I find that I like is um, uh, entry into the United States is alcohol and you're advocating for prohibition. Uh, so like the, the cartels make money on human trafficking the way the mafia made money on alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's real dumb. Let me move you up here. It might be easier to uh, read that. Let's see, I can get you a little background color so it pops a little more. I, I should maybe I should increase the font size on that. I'll think about it. Think about it. But yes, the real the real solution is just to put more resources into it. It's the same thing. Like even the border bill, and I think the border bill was um, fairly right wing. Um, part of the border bill was get more resources in and more judges in so that we can speed up the processing more of this. money off human trafficking right now because of our, our immigration system it doesn't allow more people. And the Republicans do not have a bill to allow more people to come here legally. I mean, so, so your answer to illegal immigration is just magically legalize everyone. No, it's to open up legal paths so these people don't have to leave you know, their livelihood in these countries and carry a bag and walk through the jungle no. with their kids. By the logic that you're using, we could make, we could make murder absolutely not a thing by simply... Uh, this is like a slap Ben in the in the face point. Um, that is not the point uh, by far. Uh, wow. Wow. That is such a leap. Because the point here is people do an illegal thing because they have no legal alternative. So you give them a legal alternative um, so that they can you know come in legally. They won't come in Ill illegally. Um, I don't know what Ben's about to say about murder. It's guaranteed to be stupid. Pretending that murder is now legal. What? <laughs> your, your suggestion is that's the best response millions of illegal immigrants yes. ought to just become legal immigrants and then magically no, this would solve I'm the entire problem we have failed these people we have benefited tremendously correct this person to clarify his stance bends off the rails we have benefited from these people working hard they just want to be here and be a part of our country I'm i can't not, think of anything more american than that i'm not doubting the willingness of people to come to the country he's correct to just like grandstand a little bit with rich be a little evocative didn't exist. he's got what good posture structure that incentive structure is things like Medicaid, things come like free on, schooling. Do you think like someone's going to leave their home in Venezuela to come here and leech off our Medicaid? These people want to work. These I'm, people want to live, okay, man. Then, then, then if they sign a contract saying they don't receive social... Yeah, so uh, he has chased Ben back onto his point. Ben earlier rejected the characterization that Ben was using the word uh, mooch. And at that point, he was correct to do that. Ben has now returned to the same argument and made the same argument again where uh, he's opened himself up 
to this leeching thing. And the guy is right to say, like, no, immigrants want to come here to work. I think that's pretty clear from the amount of taxes that immigrants pay. They pay a lot of taxes. Benefits, they're more than welcome to say. Oh, well, the, sadly, they would. So they're welcome to stay if they agree to be second class citizens, Ben Shapiro. Do you think we should put like a, a mark on their hand somewhere so that they show up at a hospital and uh, they know? Should we should we mandate that they carry around maybe a star of David? You hypocritical Benefits piece of trash. Benefits available to them if they could come out of the shadows and they would actually pay more I mean, taxes and contribute more to site. Let me ask you if there's a. <laughs> Passionate hands, no worries. If, if there's an accident, and, and let's say your wife's in an accident, a car accident, the only person that witnessed it is an undocumented immigrant, they're not coming forward to be a witness, Ben. Doesn't that trouble the, you? This is the reason that I should allow millions and millions of illegal immigrants. That is the reason why you should document people. Into the, into the country? Is on it's the off chance that they might be a witness? It's one reason that these people are being treated as second-class citizens, even though what they benefit your, you and I. Can I ask a question? What sure. is your standard for whether someone should be allowed into the country? My standard? You uh, get their fingerprint, you take their photograph, you put them in a database somewhere, you ask, uh, where are you from, and should I know anything about, like, any crimes you may have witnessed on your way here? Is there somebody I should be on the lookout for? Is, like, you want to talk about, like, a cartel in your country and give us the DL, and then you give them a rubber stamp and send them in and say, you're good. That's it. They should be able to go places. They're human beings. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Well, I know I know that he's going to be insanely, insanely pro-Israel, and I know he's got a lot of dumb points. But once again, I do think that Ben Shapiro mostly cares about whether or not he's correct, and I think he mostly believes what he says, unlike everybody else on the right. What do you mean so, standard? Like as far as I think I can be legitimately angry. I have some expectations you're, you're for Ben Shapiro to keep up a minimum issue. level of quality. He's not Matt Walsh. He's not. Uh, he's not um, so, so uh, Dennis Prager. So, so everyone. So, so you have no limits. How about numbers? No, do you have any number no, limit? No, no numerical no, limit. Twenty thousand people die or retire in this country a day. There's only ten thousand births. We need more people. I agree. That's why we should all have more babies. So okay. Well, guess what? People aren't going to have them because you're not incentivizing it. Kamala Harris is with her things like six thousand dollars child tax credit giving while you guys are just trying that's to a good pivot to make it that is strong harder for people to raise families okay as a, as a person with four children i can promise you i have a very very strong incentive structure in allowing people no, to you have don't. more kids and incentivizing people to you, have you you are not backing any candidate that has that shares that value more kids. Because I wish that government benefits were more effective in. Did doing you say this. you wish? They have not been in particular areas of Europe. This guy is argument good. Immigration argument. When we're talking about illegal immigration, you, you seem to be making an argument. There ought to be no baseline standard for who gets in and no baseline no, cap I'm for not, how many people get in. I'm not saying that. So we can, can come you, up with a figure. We so can do come it. up with numbers. So now, I'm not a lawmaker. That's what we elect people to go do and work out those figures. Okay, I need, but I need Republicans something. are just fighting everything. Uh, I, I, I need some standard. You need me to come up with a number. No. Let's say ten thousand. A number or a character. Maybe five thousand. Some some sort of standard. For who I think I think country. five thousand right was Hungary the number in the um, Biden standard. To come into the country without any standard. Let's any say five thousand a day. No, not at all. I want people to come here who want to work, who want to be a part of this country, and we all benefit from that. Okay, do you so, think you're not benefiting so from you, these so you, undoc undocumented people? Who so do you think is going to build you, the houses think, that we need so with do, our do, shortage? So do you think the people who come into the you country should shortage. be eligible for all social benefits? If they're contributing and they're allowed to contribute, fully, if they pay taxes, yes. They're using other people's social security numbers to pay social security tax and Medicare, and they're not able to get those benefits in the long. So, I, I, again, I'm wondering how you're balancing the cost benefit to the American body politic if what you're suggesting is the day one they you pay arrive taxes. in the country and now you're eligible for all social benefits. I'm not saying day one with, you're with no eligible education, to all Yeah, he did not make a day one argument. Ben is, um, ben is mind reading. Ben is like uh, playing ahead. You are not allowed to jump ahead in the argument to that's make sure. your argument. Well, you have to argue what's been presented. Out. You're that's fighting over the that's the, core of, that's the core of the argument. Really? Over You're upset immigration. that somebody who comes to this country and works hard and makes your life better and cheaper is going to get Social Security 40 years from now? No, not Social Security 40 years from now. Med Social Medicaid. Security, Medicaid. yes. <laughs> Go right to the benefit that they cannot pick up the moment they come and in. So would you rather than get Medicaid and get preventative care than go to the hospital where it costs you? I would prefer you, that. That's correct. Care. Preventative care is cheaper. My point, as it has been from the beginning, is that you need screening procedures for immigration. So this you're saying Border been, Patrol is failing then dumb. to screen these people properly? Is I mean, that, that the is, accusation you're making? I, I'm making the case that Border Patrol... Then maybe we should support the bill. Because, the, because you talked to a couple Border Patrol agents? You know, no, not, that is so... That is so no, because insulting to, to our border patrol no. is fighting every day on the front line. It's so line. insulting to our border patrol. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This guy's being very appropriately cute with Ben Shapiro. Literally. I think Ben has already abandoned this argument. He's already contradicted himself. 
So it's very within rights for this guy to grandstand and troll at this point because he's already won and there are very few other points to make. So when you talk about illegal uh, illegal immigrants, undocumented immigrants, the, the couple points you make is like, if we have an undocumented immigrants problem, let's just document them. Let's just bring people in and make it more legal. It'll make things easier, make things better. You get like preventative care, things like that. One of the next big pillars to stand on is they pay taxes. They they pay taxes all up and down, and they are not able to you know pull on these systems. So when Ben says that these people are a draw on our resources is just factually incorrect. You just hit him on that point. And then, of course, the third thing to stand on is they actually commit less crime. That's the only thing we haven't brought up. But Ben has not gotten to the argument about immigrants um, committing crimes because he's been cornered on these points so quickly. Um, ben has been so thoroughly countered and thrashed here. Today, he's got FBI nothing to work with. An Afghan national was let in without vetting and tried to plan a terrorist attack. One on guy. Election. Oh, it's just one. So one, one guy's correct. You no know biggie. how many terrorists no were caught by the the border under Trump? There are over zero. Three. There are over three. At least we're catching them. There are over. <laughs> there are over. At least we're catching them. But yeah, um, you know, uh, I've heard that uh, there are some white guy terrorists out there who, uh, you know, shoot up nightclubs and stuff. I think we should ban all the white guys. I think we should just get rid of them. Um, that will that will prevent crime. That is a cogent, there intelligent three, position. Uh, first of all, first of all, it's not true because a huge number of people we don't know who they are are coming across the border between ports of entry. Second of all, you're talking in this country right now at at least 300,000 minors. We have no idea where they are. Oh, Our that is nonsense. That, that is, is nonsense. no, it is. It is ICE has lost track of them because it's voluntary for them to keep in touch with the system. They are not lost. They're released to their sponsors who have to go through background checks. You have no idea what you're they, talking they, about. They, do, they don't. You think 300,000 minors are lost in America? I'm are you crazy? I'm saying. That <laughs> it, Oh man, that's gotta be, that. that's department. gotta be a psychological hit for a room of 20 people surrounding Ben to openly laugh at him. Next thing you're gonna tell that. me there's 19,000 murderers, right? Is that the next talking point? No, that is not the next talking oh, point. Okay. The, the, but Because the guy's ready for it. The guy knows the stats and he's ready for Ben to say this. Turns out when you increase a number of population, all the numbers associated with things that populations do increases and that is not an indictment of that population unless those numbers per capita are meaningfully different than another comparative population and you're going to have to every to Republican okay. talking head so fails to of minors hit checked that. out to majors to, to people who are above majority age and then for the to government the, to, to not to when I say lose track I don't mean minors check out to their sponsor who goes through a background they check is that what you mean through, they do not go through, how do you know how, that they, because they're not checking in how a huge you know number that? of people oh it's uh, voluntary why is our law allow for it to be voluntary then if it's not working the law should not allow for it to be voluntary oh and in fact, so men, maybe Trump should have changed the law in fact human trafficking is going on at scale it sounds like you're upset the problem doesn't exist Exist. Where, what, what is I this question. problem? Why, why, is, why, yeah. uh, why are you okay with minors who are being checked out to people of majority age who then don't check in with the government? Is that okay, okay with you? I'm okay with minors being checked out to their sponsors who go through background checks. Sponsors undergo an assessment process. Yep. Criminal and sex offender checks and a background check on other adults in the care plan right there in the fact check. Who are usually family members, people that know them. You think it's just uh, some random? You, you think I can go pick up a, a undocumented immigrant child right now? No, but I do know that that has happened to tens of thousands of kids. Oh, in this really? You, yes. So you think they're just being released to random people? They're being released to people who claim that they are relatives, and in many cases, they are uh, not necessarily relatives. How do they're you not know that? Because they are not checking in for how the do you know that? Oh, because they're not checking in for the voluntary so follow-up okay. appointments. So you're assuming the worst. To... You're assuming they're probably being kidnapped well, I'm, and trafficked. I'm, 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 I'm happy for you that you're assuming the best as to what happens with minor I'm children. I'm always going to assume adults. the best about my fellow Americans, and of course, I'm always going to assume the best about my fellow. Yeah, that's that's the correct move. Just like because Ben has no facts. Um, ben is making like a um, um, he's he's jacking off. Uh, ben is is, is just asking questions. Uh, and it's not, uh, it's not relevant. It's not important. There's no response to this because uh, he's said multiple times uh, at this point that they go through a vetting process, they go through background checks, they go through all the stuff. There are rules about it. We had this, the fact check on screen. If Ben had access to the fact check, he'd probably be abandoning, abandoning the point. No, actually, what's kind of weird. Assume all this weird stuff. Anybody who picks up a kid without proper verification and background check, they have a background check. Proper verification and background check. What do you know about the parents? What do you know about the people who are picking them up? 
I've what read, do you know about the cousins? What do you I've know about read the that these people go through background checks and they are sponsors, usually you... family members. You don't sound like you've read we... anything about this. I, you I... just have some fantasy you made up about me being able to go pick up an undocumented I... child. Why don't you and I go try? You haven't read anything about this. You've got a fantasy. Later. We'll see what happens. Uh, I have a question. Where? I have a question. Where are you possibly coming up with that since I've actually said the opposite? You, you want me to name the article? You can go Google it yourself. Maybe yeah, you'll learn something. I... <laughs> Which article specifically are you talking about? Man, when you get home, go on Google Why don't you and type Google? in how are undocumented migrants' children released and what is the process? You'll be, you'll read all about it. I, I can read all about it. And one of the things that See? I've read is that the uh, is that the the this immigration is crazy. Oh have not man! Done proper follow -up well, you read it on hundreds. Of the, you read it on Gateway Pundit? Or no, what? on Wall Street <laughs> Journal at the Department of Justice uh, in all in all of the legal claims by the federal government. Yes, these are, this is in the New York Times. Okay. It's it, it's not. It's not. You're yeah, completely again, I just out want to there. Make sure we're on the same page. Three hundred thousand children Do are not being have exploited in America right I, now. That is not the claim. Okay, the, so the, what the, is the claim, claim is that the federal government does not know where they are. Oh, that is the claim, and so that is and that is absolutely valid. Do you know where they are? Do you think the federal government knows the where federal all of them are? Do you think the federal government should be tracking? I have a question. Why is it, why, why, I think this is a good pivot. This is a good pivot. Do you think the federal government should be tracking everybody? Do you think the federal government should have a database of people? Uh, for instance, do you think the government? Do you think the federal government should track gun purchases everywhere in the United States? That'd be pretty uh, has a messed up. to release children who come across the border only to people for whom they're. How is long are how long are they supposed to check in on them? How long is the government supposed to track these people? Is the government supposed to track these people for uh, ten years? Is the government supposed to track these people until they're eighteen? Is there supposed to be a demographic of people in the United States that are? Eagle Eye watched by the government until they become adults. Yes, and if I, I find it very. I don't think Ben would normally support that. Signing off on handing over children to people who merely claim. Yeah, Ben's super stuck on this when he does not have the factual backing. Don't know what that background check is. Because usually you should have evidence that that is in fact the case. How do you know it's not? Why is the assumption that your claim is that people are taking out kids like library books and not providing the proper identification and background? Your lack of concern about what happens to those kids when proper verification and follow up is not done seems disquieting. To create me. fantasy scenarios where things that aren't happening. Are there cases where some children are going to be exploited? Saying, wait, of course, there's tons of people in this country. So We're the third we largest that? country in the world. So, should, so what should we do to stop that? Well, you sound very passionate about this. Maybe you should write your Congress member and say we should tighten up these laws and make it mandatory instead of voluntary. You know, in order to do that, one of the things you might want to do, close the border. The border is closed, Ben. No, it is certainly yes, it not. Yes, it is. The border yes, is as it closed is. as it needs to be. Not closed. Do you think the border was closed under Trump? No, I don't think it was fully closed under Trump. Oh, so you say Trump failed at closing the border? Yes. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Donald Trump should so have done more to close the border. Why would you want him back in there? If he's going to fail again? Because he did a better job. Why would you want him back in there? So this is a bit of an indirect attack because Ben has not said during this segment that he necessarily wants Trump in. He's trying to position himself uniquely as criticizing uh, Harris. But it's a fair attack. I mean, I mean, Ben definitely wants Trump in. Ben has said earlier in the discussion that he thinks it was good that Trump was elected. Uh, he, you know, it's 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 like oblique. It's a little unfair if if we if we were talking to an ordinary person uh, who doesn't have their own platform and they're like super well documented series of positions. This would be a bit of dirty pool. But we're not. We're talking to Ben Shapiro. He's a little evil. Joe Biden has the exact same. So you can be a little nasty right now as Trump. At the end of his administration, I, I have a question. If Trump was on pace to let in nine hundred thousand, if that was the case, a year. I, I have a question for you. Sure. Why is it that after a president allows in through pure executive order negligence, having walked back the executive orders that created the policies negligence. that you are now praying negligence? Yeah. Yep. I mean, if you want to call it purposeful, call it purposeful. They were, on day one. They were negged on Remain in Mexico. They, they changed the standards Mexico's, by which asylum was claimed. Mexico's got to play. It takes two to is, tango. Mexico didn't want anything to do with Remain in Mexico. Remain in Mexico was the American. January 19, uh, Trump launched Remain in Mexico, requiring asylum seekers, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, Remain in Mexico is Joe Biden bad. walked out on Remain in Mexico. There's the also a is, small number of people. It's like a couple tens of thousands of people. A couple tens of thousands of people. The, the unprecedented level of illegal immigration is apparently totally fine with you under Joe Biden. No, listen, we need more people in this country, Ben. There's no legal means for them to come in that are reasonable. That so these people true. are forced to that come in through true. the southern border because there's no other way. There are hundreds of thousands of people who come into this country every year legally on visas. Yes, and that... Every year, hundreds of thousands. The earlier statistics that both of you discussed, admit, like both of you agreed, that there is a 10,000 person per day shortfall in like births, deaths. So hundreds of thousands per year is implying like 
a couple of people per day. Process is difficult. We need a lot more people than hundreds of thousands. So man. you're making a case for broadening legal legal immigration. Yes. Yes. If, yeah. Yeah. We need we need a couple more people than hundreds of thousands per year. Hundreds of thousands per year is way too low. But you are not setting any standard or numbers by which we are supposed to adjudicate because whether this is good not, or bad. That's not my job. All I know is it's too difficult. So right you're not now. making an argument at all. You're making an argument that basically he's we clearly made an argument. He's made an argument that you can't reply to. You I'm not, fine with the number. Hold on. We you have, not, have not set a number. You have not set a standard. You have suggested you are utterly fine. We should have a number. Minors, Closing the border zero is the wrong number. You have not you have not you have suggested that there is no major problem with exploitation of children being trafficked over the border. Ben has lost it. Ben is just angry right now. A million a year because that's what he was on pace to let in by the end of his administration. 75,000 a month equals 900,000. Okay. It was good. He landed on a number at the end, uh, like going, yeah, let's go with Trump's number, 900,000 a year. Okay. Pretty good. Ben was, ben was tapped there. <laughs> good for you, dude. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't uh, think it's going to get better. So I'm just really unclear about what of her policies do you think are bad? Because I'm not sure I heard that yet. Okay, the revocation. Uh, so I think first we have to define what we think her policies are. Yeah, please so, do. Okay, mm -hmm. so there is the policy that was implemented under Joe Biden. Clarify. Clarify. Joe Biden, and then there's Always the clarify. She adopted over the course of the last 45 to 60 days when she was actually running for president, where she seems to have adopted many of the prior immigration policies of the Trump administration. So which one do you think is actually her position is sort of the open question about Kamala Harris? I'm assuming that the record of the Biden administration provides a pretty good... So you, Ben Shapiro, are not willing to say what her policies are, but they'll be, they're bad? And, and you're saying that it's the same as the Trump administration, but you're saying... They will turn America into an unsafe and bankrupt nation. What policy, Ben? Which policy? You're the one, you're the one who said these are bad the policies. Which, made which policy? I, mean, I think what's really clear that I feel like you've overlooked a lot is that a lot of the things that Joe Biden has done that you don't love are because he first tried to do things the right way through legislation. But Congress won't do it. So I guess my question for you is what would your plan be for Kamala if not to try to get a law through Congress when Congress won't pass them? I'm perfectly happy for trying to get a law through Congress, provided I, you know, actually like the law. I mean, yeah, yeah, sure. But if you're talking about what she could do day one, I mean, she yeah. could actually continue to enforce the newfound enthusiasm for border security in the uh, in the run up to the election that Joe Biden has now implemented. Well, so setting, remain in Mexico, aside your asylum, and all that. the rest of that. Setting aside your settings, yeah, because there's like a lot of unnecessary um, characterization that uh, Ben is running in here that needs to be left behind. Characterization. Um, I mean, that's, how? that's actually what he did. How? Sure. Okay. Sure. Re whatever you remain, say. Remain, how? In remain in Mexico, which is fraught with rape. Remain. Rem <laughs> That is very correct, and that is the best immediate counter to that. It's like you just lay it on the table. Uh, shock value, Ben, right yeah, there. Yeah, no, actually, Remain in Mexico has been found to be really dangerous for the people who are stuck there. Okay, and it's in, it is also a fact of the matter that if you're talking about controlling the border, Remain in Mexico is a better way to control the border than simply releasing people no, into it's, the interior. No, it's not. Come back to court date. So you, you feel that that would be better than, say, funding border security and related agencies to house those people safely? It is generally not. Yep, because we asked you, Ben, what was your first way, what was the first thing you would do? Like, what is your preferred policy? And he goes right for the the rapey one. Not a matter of funding at the border. It really. How is it not? I mean, what is it? It, it? it is a matter of how asylum is actually interpreted. So the way that asylum was interpreted for a long time was that you had to show by a preponderance of the evidence that you actually had a legitimate asylum. Claim. We know what the it's evidence is. It's not that is. different now. And it, it, it's it not was, that it, different. It was, no. That, that. Yeah. It's not different. Claim is over. Thanks. Okay. I have to take a moment. I think I was getting good. My I think that guy had some some Israel stuff to Hamas go. war would not have started under Donald Trump. This is an insane claim to make. Absolutely insane claim. It's like, what was Trump even doing under Hamas? Is the is the is the idea here that there would be some kind of intimidation factor? I don't I don't get it. Okay, I, I realized I want more coffee. One second. Okay, coffee is coffee's been acquired. Uh, but yes, I think this is an insane position to try and argue or defend. Um, you, you have to like argue future sight. It's insane. Oh yeah, everybody loves Donald Trump. Of course, naturally. Not leading the polls, Benny Gantz. Yeah, yeah, Shapiro's Biden. completely out there on this. Um, we'll be pursuing I mean, Shapiro's completely pro genocide on this topic. I think we're not awesome. so then getting anywhere. I'm just going to skip on past this one because uh, it's just going to be like insane. 
I choose Tyler. Oh, oh, okay. So this is a topic that's brought up by one of the 20 people in the room. Okay. So this is going to be a lot more interesting. Yeah. I'm just going to, just going to cut forward past the, um, the Israeli genocide the stuff. Yeah. Time. Ben Shapiro's really fully, to to fully have, cooked brain on that. Mike Clement said Donald Trump did not commit to a peaceful transfer of power. Uh, let's uh, slow this back down to uh, regular speed. Yeah, Donald Trump did not commit to a peaceful transfer of power. Okay, so yeah, I think it's simple. I think Trump uh, helped. Let's uh, see how he sets the base for this. A fake electric scheme to override the um, election. Fake electric scheme to override the election. To have Mike Pence not certify the election, and then oh, I uh, violence. Okay, I came back. There we go. Whoops. Okay. I, I lost the, the feed for so a moment for Donald some reason. Though OBS did something weird. Half, where he would say things like, fight like hell. They're stealing the country away from us. And then when people got to the Capitol, Donald Trump sat there for three hours and watched them. When his aides, his um, mm -hmm. family, yep. and everyone was telling him, put a stop to the violence. Three, he's got to condemn to go ASAP. Capitol Police tweet, not and enough. That is an Ultimately, Trump put out a video at 417. He was allowing the violence to happen when he could have stopped it. Okay, so as far as allowing the violence to happen when he could have stopped it. No, I, I'm wondering exactly what he could have done given the fact that the Capitol Police were activated. And okay, I think this is a really funny thing because um, you could say, does Donald Trump have a burden of care and link it back to the abortion discussion? In fact, pretty quickly uh, in the middle of, of that debacle, as far as not committing to the peaceful transfer of power, yeah. do we mean verbally or, act or in action? So I agree in with you verbally. He never suggested that I am going to leave. And then he did. So, yeah. you know, uh, so I'm not sure actually how much we disagree on this matter. I thought that January 6th was terrible. I, just, I, I thought that his behavior between the so the the, the point of this or the assertion of this is Donald Trump was a driver of January 6th, and that January he 6th bears responsibility for that act. So that's the, the, the clarification here. Took place as opposed to bad yeah. behavior that raised the temperature that I think is really, really negative. Uh, as far as not committing to the peaceful transfer of power, he, he clearly committed to the extent that he left, right? I mean, Joe Biden has been president for the last three and a half years for how much of that he's been mentally yeah, aware. Uh, clearly but, the know, question it, is, it, it, I, I'm just this is a very long walk. Well, like, where, where, where do we disagree? Yeah, yeah, well, I'll quote you, right? Yeah, January 6th was the worst thing to happen since 9-11, right? And I just want to be clear that you agree he verbally did not want to uh, commit to the peaceful transfer of power. He tried to stop it, yet you are still saying that he should be the president of the United States. Well, I mean, he did right? not. That is, your, that is your claim, though. He should be the president of the United States, and you agree he verbally did not commit to the peaceful transfer of power. Well, I mean, I, he did not verbally suggest that there ought to be a violent uprising, revolution, or military He did. He also, didn't, he also didn't stop it, right? So there were people well, inside inside the Capitol. And there's a more, there are more effective ways of age, presenting this, um, I think. Yeah, earlier, yeah, no, I agree yeah, with you. Yes, and they were telling him, like, Trump, you have to do this. You have to stop. He was informed at 2.14 p.m. When the moment Trump the decided saying, not to stop like it is, like I think, like when he became most clearly there, culpable. I mean, he was also involved in the conspiracy to defraud the government, he but says, he, he gained responsibility for the violence he would tweet that uh, when he refused to do something about it. They were saying, hang Mike Pence. Mike Pence had to go into hiding. Why do you think he would tweet that at that moment? I mean, I disagree with him tweeting with that. I, I, I'm not saying you agree why, with him. Why, why, so the, the question as to why Donald Trump does anything is is a matter of, yeah, but, of but public you're, speculation. You're, you're, you're is pretending that you can't read speculation. Donald Trump's I, mind I, I is, uh, is just feeble-minded uh, meandering. Trump Mike Pence murdered. I think the answer no, no, is no. No, I'm not asking if he wanted to murder. I'm saying, do you think he wanted the violence to stop? Uh, do I think he wanted? Yes. Really? So he, yes. his idea to stop the violence is saying Mike Pence is a traitor. I, I, I think that he... That is, okay. Uh, yeah, Ben Ben capitulated there. Yeah, the the question straightforwardly: Do you think Donald Trump wanted the violence to stop? That's a good way of um of like framing this. That's a good way of uh getting at uh Donald Trump's mindset on this. And uh, funnily enough, Ben has argued earlier in the segment when we were talking about the um uh the DEI stuff that you can uh, discern somebody's uh, like state through actions, um, basically. Was in control of- And then it's, you know, moving on from there, it's, do you think that, so if you think that Donald Trump wanted the violence to stop, then his method for doing that was to say that Mike Pence is a traitor. This is a very clear, picture to paint. You let the audience fill in the gaps that Ben is very clearly incorrect about his statement that Donald Trump wanted the violence to stop. And you let Ben say the point. You ask Ben to clarify a position. Then you counter that position.
the forces that he was in control of, and the so Capitol Police yeah, weren't in control exactly. of Nancy Pelosi. What was he? He was the president of the United States. Right, and the military right. and was saying, hey, So what was he in control of? He's in control of his tweets, and the tweet he sent out was that Mike yeah, Pence is a traitor. No, Mike Pence, you're a traitor. Okay. Why do you think he would say that at that moment? Okay, I, I just expressed to you that I, I can't see into his head because I have a hard yeah, time. but you can make a guess, though, right? Well, so if he said that in that moment, does the, the better way of phrasing this is, him saying that in that moment clarifies that his priority was not to end the violence. Uh, that his priority was not yeah, for but, things no, to be peaceful. Why you think he did that? Why did, do I, I mean, think you that? said that he, he didn't I, want This is a good redirect by Ben. Why hypocrite. do you think he you did it? That, so yeah, ben doesn't need to answer this. I think that Donald Trump was indifferent to what happened in so far the violence Mike Pence. I think he wanted a lot of chaos. He wanted violence to delay the certification of the vote, which he was successful with, in hopes that there would be confusion and someone else might step up like another senator so they could allow to put forward the fake electorates because that was the plan that was in Greensboro. Yep, the plan uh, was to get through the fake, er fake electorates, which is so yes, Donald just Trump was fraud. Okay with the violence because he did not want the certification to happen. And in fact, for the first time in American history, he delayed it. And to me, it's like, Ben, I really like you, but I think there's a lot of attributes that I like about you especially your American values. That is the antithesis of American values. Allowing that to happen, wanting that to happen, and then, yeah. Okay, so I think that Donald Trump obviously should have done more. I agree with you. He should have yeah. done more mm -hmm. on January 6th. I think that, you know, he shouldn't have tweeted that about Mike Pence. He I shouldn't have, what he was obviously. About Mike Pence is in the entire electoral scheme between November so and So the, the question here is, is more so than do you disagree, is do you think that indicates that he was okay with what was happening? And I think that's uh, a question that's very difficult to pin Ben down on not committing to the peaceful transfer of power. Again, what I will say is that the legal transfer of power did in fact take place. He did not in fact initiate yeah, a militia against, to against, storm against the capital. Of the he, he, did in, he did okay, initiate like, a militia like, to storm like, the capital. Like, like, he did. I, I agree. I have a, it happened because of the guardrails of democracy, but Donald Trump did not want it to stand. Okay. Do you agree that Donald Trump did not want that election to be certified? I mean, you, sure. you can't so say that, um, like, well, going like, do you agree that Donald Trump didn't want is um, giving Ben a lot of room. Do you agree that the actions Donald Trump took enabled the violence to continue? Do you agree that the actions that Donald Trump took enabled the delay of the certification? But he did not want the peaceful transfer of power, though. I mean, the, the, if the election had not been certified, then... Because there, you, you, you say, like, did the actions Donald Trump took allow this to happen? And then you say, okay, that indicates, that is indicative that the actions John, Donald Trump took were contrary to allowing a peaceful transition transfer of power. Legal process that took place, right? I mean, the, the, the question as to- So you said- so you, you would have been Hold on, can I, can I ask, oh, yeah, can I ask yeah, the, the opposite yeah, for just a second? Of course. So is, is your contention that Donald Trump actually would have been in favor of, for example, like a military coup yes, to keep himself in power? I think Donald Trump absolutely yeah, 100%. would have. Yeah, 100%. And all evidence- that's a all, No, all evidence points that he was trying to find any Yeah, way because we now him. know through, um, we now know through Mark Kelly that uh, Donald Trump wanted to have generals like Hitler did. And, that, and that's why he wanted generals who would be willing to perform a coup for him. And, and this is gone. I, see, I, see, I think, I think, I think he was the, trying to find, is, I think he was trying to find any way to say that he didn't lose. I don't think that he was trying to try to, to activate any no, way no, no, that he could stay in power. That's him, not quite the same thing. No, him saying that he wasn't trying to lose is different from him at sending down fake electorates with fake signatures to fraudulently steal the election. Okay, the, in order the fake electors scheme is the real coup. The military I didn't say, I didn't, no, I that does, that's not required for an insurrection. So, uh, so again, and yes, this guy's I'll, not arguing I'll, insurrection. Is, He's arguing non-peaceful transfer. Has suggested he He's arguing no transfer. He did I mean, not want peaceful transfer. If you're asking me to defend and, his behavior on January 6th, you'll notice that I really haven't. So yeah, but, I'm, I'm, but, like, I'm wondering exactly I feel like you're underplaying of how horrible this was. I mean, and, and that's the that's a good that's right. a good tra you're track. It's I'm you're underplaying it. Because you're underplaying it because you're still on the right. If you're still on the right, you're underplaying January 6th. You have to be. the violence for three hours to happen in the Capitol when they were under attack. The centers, the people that- You didn't do anything about it, Ben. You aren't doing anything about it now. You refuse to say something about it. You're not condemning Donald Trump. You feel as though what Donald Trump did on January 6th is not disqualifying. Yes, because- That is a little funny. Well, I mean, uh, Donald Trump is Donald Trump um, is on the way out either way because he's he's old he can't think so it's it's all a setup for Pence uh, not Pence it's all a setup for Vance anyway the stakes are yes. this man will would want to do it again okay so let me ask about that can I ask about that quickly so Vance, Vance is worse yeah. than uh, Trump because he knows he how to shut his mouth he's more dangerous okay so let me ask you this you said that he'd want to do it again can I ask you how 
I mean, he could do like the exact same scheme with fake electorates. You could do the same. Yeah, you could do the same thing. Like, yeah, I'm not certifying the election. What do you mean? I mean All Mike Pence had to do was well, not. No, 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 no. But yeah, practically speaking, yes. he is currently not in office. Correct. He's not. Well, so he you agree that if he was in office, he would yeah, subvert he, the election? He's not president, he can't do it. Correct. Which is why I don't think anyone should vote for Donald so, Trump. So, so, so wait. You, so I have a question. Do yeah. you do you believe? And this is really the question because if you're talking about he's going to do it again, the only opportunity that he'd have to do it again, presumably, would be if he won and then he were running for say a third. No, term. I, and you would like to let him do that? I disagree. I think he can do it for someone else. He might do it for another candidate that he likes. They'll uphold the How? MAGA values. MAGA has taken over the Republican Party, much yeah. to your death, uh, much to your chagrin. I agree, it's bad, but he absolutely would do that again to someone who's loyal. And JD Vance I, has said he would not certify the election. Okay. I think that's a JD right Vance has said already, that he would not certify. certify the election. You can't predict Trump. You can't even know why he'd be thinking anything. I find so that how could I, you say that won't be a threat? Because, that because, because, oh. okay, because, because I, I find it highly implausible that Donald Trump is uh, so caring about somebody who's not Donald Trump. You find it highly implausible that Donald Trump would do something that Donald Trump has already done before. That's insane. Really? Well, Donald Trump Jr. Don, you think he's going to do that for Donald Trump Jr.? I think he'd do it for Donald Trump Jr. I think really? he'd do it for or something. I, I, think, I think he would do it for anyone who's loyal okay. to show that they're still upholding the MAGA name and he will want the Democrats to lose. You're yeah. entitled to your opinion on it. I think that's radical catastrophism. I think that the, I think that it when already it comes happened down, once, right? You're it already Trump happened Trump. once. That almost happened once. I'm, the only reason because it didn't This is a great counter. I mean, this is exactly what I was saying a moment ago. It's like, do you think it's radical to assume that something that has happened could happen again? Because the conditions because are not the same. And it's not the conditions aren't the same because okay, Donald Trump's not the president. The so you so agree that the condition of okay, Donald Trump being the president the allowed all this election. bullshit to happen. It's wild. In the primaries. When it comes down yes. to a binary election, everybody now has a choice. Okay, there are only two candidates left. I've made pretty clear, I think, over the course of this debate, the myriad reasons why I don't support Kamala Harris. Okay, yeah. now Donald Trump is on the other side. So the question is, what am I supposed uh, yeah, to yeah. do? Am I supposed to sit it out? I, I am I supposed to like? Yeah, the, 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 yeah the, sit it out. Vote for the person who you said helped do the act that was the worst of act in America since 9/11. Yeah, I, 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 don't yeah, think, I think, think you're supposed to him. not okay. vote for the guy. Well, that, maybe don't stump for him. Overthrow the election. Maybe don't critique his opponent. Okay. Is that like such a crazy idea? This guy's neck veins are distracting me a little bit. Vote for the person you think. I don't want to focus on it. And what I liked about President Trump was his first it's term, tough. not his activity between November and January. That's yeah. the simple answer. I mean, I, you're not going to get me justifying January 6th. You're not going to catch me pretending that I think his activity on January 6th was good. I also think that it is an act of catastrophism to suggest that Donald Trump is going to facilitate He's going to do something the exact he did. thing he did on January 6th. Look, because look, the how is it an act? <laughs> he even said to do the same exact thing he did. How? <laughs> I think it's catastrophism to say that Donald Trump will do something Donald Trump already did once. That is incredible. That is insane. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think they like Vance because they know they can make Vance do what he wants. And yeah, Vance does not have Trump's dopey charisma, but he can lie. Um, because Vance knows what not to say. And that's one of the like problems that I think the kind of puppeteer Project 25, uh, Project 2025 people have with Trump is that uh, Trump says every quiet part out loud. Well, um, fact, all of them. Prevent Trump says the quiet thing. things out loud that, because then, uh, you know, president again, he's not going to be able to run for a third time. I think gambling with democracy it's is wild. dangerous, and that's what you're suggesting we're doing. We, In already, what way? we already have a man who's maybe shown we, maybe we that shouldn't he would gamble with democracy. The election. You're like, you know what, let's roll the dice again. Let's see if he does it. No. You agree it's possible he might do it, right? No, I don't think You, you think possible. it's impossible he might not do it. For overthrow the election? I don't think yeah, he, he tried to do it once. He, and not certify the election. You think that's oh, that's wild. Okay, I'm going to jump to the outro because I think I've heard the whole argument there. I don't think anything else happens there. Other than a couple of uh, minor hiccups, I think everybody was was coming at this in good spirit and wanting to have. A I do think most of the um, uh, people who spoke were in uh, were in good faith on this. There were a lot of effective arguments. I think we did hit a gap uh, during the abortion arguments where some of the people were not there to talk to Ben. And I do think that's problematic within the format. Everybody's got limited time. You need to let somebody come out um, because you need Ben to participate in the discussion in order to beat Ben in the discussion. And as much as I say, like, the goal is to please the audience. The goal is to make a good argument more so than it is to win. But winning is still, winning is still in there. It's still a part of it. So you need Ben to say things so that you can counter those statements. Um, so you can't just like exclude Ben entirely the same way that it's dirty pool for Ben to filibuster and, you know, talk through other people, which he does plenty often. Um, 
I did like that a couple a couple people were good at interrupting Ben. This um this dude we had on immigration, the immigration segment was peak. That was incredible. Just absolutely dismantled. Um and and both of the prominent speakers there were pretty effective. And of course the the second guy who came on uh looks like he was talking uh from about this like 50 minute point up through this like um uh, hour thirteen, uh, hour three point. So that's a solid thirteen minute. That is more than half the time. I know Mason had four minutes of uh, of conversation there. Uh, so almost the entire twenty minute block was this guy just absolutely handling Ben Shapiro. Uh, great, great stuff. Great stuff. Yeah, the the abortion segment. I think there were a lot more effective arguments to make. I think um, not enough people make an effective pro-abortion argument. It's a bit of cool. And it was fun to hear what they had to say. I think Ben was significantly more respectful than Charlie Kirk was and a lot more well This is This is one of the guys, this, this is, the, that was the guy who owned Charlie Kirk. I'll give him credit for but being- But Charlie Kirk is a very, very disingenuous, awful person. I think Charlie Kirk is actually an order of magnitude worse than Ben Shapiro. Being a nice guy and, and he seemed to be having fun and he seemed to be in good spirits. With that said, I think there were a couple topics where he was being kind of dishonest. If you speak quick enough and you don't really have someone who's familiar on the topics you're talking about, we can kind of gloss over things that are kind of shaky in terms of argument. That I think is true. that Ben uh, overwhelmingly is probably the best debater that you know the other side of the aisle has. However, I still think that you know that what he stands for, what he stands behind, is really detrimental to the state of America and the people yep. in it. Uh, I yep. thought that there were a couple of interesting arguments about abortion. I didn't get a chance to speak because it was pretty competitive, but Ben's third claim about abortion being morally indefensible was so frustrating for me to hear. We are in a unique chapter of this issue mm -hmm. in that we now have legislation that has been passed on the subject that we can look at the effects of what it's doing to our country. These are real instances of mothers who are dying because of this legislation. This is this is a really good that's a really good angle to come at it from because because you can see the actual effects on the argument that it is morally inde indefensible to have a certain stance is an argument that the these new eff the the argument has to take responsibility for these new effects that we can see and you can corner him on that. Gentlemen I mean, that wasn't, that, that wasn't an argument. It was an emotional appeal. Uh, everybody's entitled to their emotions. To be fair, uh, I would agree on him that really it was a bit of an emotional appeal. points across because I've seen how Ben has worked. So I really yeah, wanted yeah. to... Yeah, Shane was not trying to communicate with give Ben. Give him a taste of his own medicine so you can see what it's like. Somewhat irritating when... when yeah, it's a bit of his own medicine. decide to take advantage of a time to have a discussion or an argument to, to simply rant for, for minutes on end. But again, person's entitled to their feelings. I mean, you do if the I same thing, one ben, person so. from the circle that I thought did phenomenal, it would be Guy. I would say Guy was... Uh, Probably the MVP today. Guy did a really good job on the border, exposing yeah, how that was a lot of lies from the Republican side about the bipartisan border bill. I have never seen a performance like that. I personally learned a lot, and I bet a lot of people at home. Incredibly good. There's a fellow who gave some some you know interesting arguments about about interesting arguments. Although, think, yeah, standards yeah. With regard to what he would allow in and who he would allow in. I actually was uh, a bit surprised to hear him say one of those talking points that I mentioned. The 300,000 kids have disappeared. I thought he was a little above that, to be honest. Yeah, I think Tyler I thought really he was above well, that. Oh, that's sort of cool. Oh. <laughs> it is indefensible and it's anti-democratic and anti-American values. And it's the one weakness I think Ben Shapiro knows he has. Most of the reason that people are supporting Kamala Harris has almost nothing to do with Kamala Harris and simply to do with, with animus for, for Donald Trump on a personal level. I am proudly uh, is it on a, Is it on a personal level that he, he, he wants to destroy democracy and be Hitler? Is that personal? I don't think that's personal. I think it's a no-brainer. Personal is it like if he if he insulted my mother? It's not what he's done. He, to make sure that the guy who's trying to destroy the country, uh, maintaining our democracy, gets back in the White House. Kamala Harris has a better economic plan, better border plan, pretty much across okay, cool. the board. I think she's a better candidate. If Donald.